Okay, now let's handle the client app for email confirmation. First of all, I would like to create a folder inside my models and I would like to name it as account. So I right click on models and I click new folder and I name it as account. And then I would like to drag all these three files and move them to the inside my account folder. So I select move and then we're gonna have some problems. So let's fix those problems. So at first we have a problem inside account service. So if I open my account service and then we need to update the model. So we need to put account and forward slash. Then the error has gone. And also we need to fix the register component.ts. So if I scroll up and we need to put account and forward slash. So if I come back to my account service, then we need to fix this and we put account and forward slash. And if I save all, then we still have some problem inside authorization guard. So if I open my authorization guard, then we need to fix this issue as well. And if I save, then the last thing is login.component. So I open login.component and I put account and forward slash and all the error has fixed. So the reason I did this because inside my API, we have details and we have created a folder representing our controller. So I would like the same inside my Angular. So we have models and account is representing all the models inside my account module. Then I open my database and if I select everything from identity app, so Basically, I'm going to drop all these records because I, I don't need them. So I'm going to use delete from identity app ASP.NET users. So if I select this, then six rows have been affected. So if I select everything, so we don't have any users inside our ASP.NET users. Then I navigate to my browser and I try to create an account. And when I create the account, I can see account created. Your account has been created. Please confirm your email address. And if I select OK, then if I go back to my email address, then I can see I have received an email zero minutes ago. So if I open this, then I can open the link by clicking here. And then we can see not found works. So basically this path has not been assigned. So that's why we see not found component. So right now I'm going to fix a not found words uh, and I'm going to just fix a not found page. Uh, so if I open my Visual Studio code and inside my shared, then we have components, then we have errors and not found. And if I open my not found dot component HTML, then inside my P tag, we have not found and we can have a class of H1 in order to make it bigger. And then we can have a button and a class of BTN, BTN primary, and we can have a router link. And this goes to the home page. And if I save, then I can see not found page and we can navigate to the home page by clicking here. So I'm going to click here once again, and then we need to create a component called confirm email, and we need to give it this path. So I open my Visual Studio code and inside my second tab, then I have to navigate to account folder and I'm going to close all the tabs at the top, except we are going to open the account service and as well as account routing module. Then inside my second tab, I navigate to my account folder. I say CD SRC app account. Then we are going to have NGGC and we name it as confirm email and we skip test. Then I open my account routing module and inside here, I'm going to have another path. So I just copy this down and instead of register, we have confirm dash email. And for the component, we have confirm email component. And if I save and if I open my browser, then I can see confirm email works. So we have been navigated to the confirm email component. And right now I would like to change the title of my website. So instead of client app, we have identity app. So if I open my Visual Studio and if I open the index.html, then we can 
simply say identity app and if i save and if i refresh then i can see identity app so let's complete confirm email and if i open my visual studio and I, i'm gonna open confirm email that component that ts so i close other apps and then inside here we are going to have implement on in it and for the implement on init, we need to implement interface on init. And just above here, we are going to have a constructor. And inside my constructor, we are going to inject account service, shared service, router, and activated route. So I say private account service of account service. And then we are going to inject shared service. And then we are going to have private router of type router and private activated route of type activated route then inside my ng on init we are going to check if the user has logged in so if the user has logged in then we simply navigate back to the home page so i'm gonna check if this account service dot user dollar and then we are going to use from pipe and take so we take the first element and make sure to bring take from rxjs then we subscribe and inside subscribe we have a next and inside next we have user of type user and the user might be null so it has a type of user or not and then we use the arrow function and then we say if the user is not null then this dot router dot navigate by url to the home page else we are making use of activated route in order to take the token and email. So if I open my browser, we can see token over here and all the way we have email. So we can achieve these two strings from the activated route. So that's why we have injected activated route. So in order to do that, we are going to have this dot activated route dot query params map then subscribe and inside next we have params of type any and then we can console dot log params dot get and inside here we have token and i'm going i'm going to have another console log and instead of token we have email so if i save and if i open my browser then if i open my console i can see this is my token and this is my email so we have achieved these two strings using activated route and using prompts so we are going to get the token and as well as the email and we need to pass these two as a model to the api so if i open my visual studio and inside my account controller so inside my confirm email we are receiving a model and if i go to the definition then we are going to get a token and email from the body of the request. So we need to create a model inside our Angular. So I navigate back to Visual Studio Code and inside shared and inside models and inside account, we are going to have another TS file. So I click on new file and I name it as confirm email.ts. Then we have export interface, confirm email, and this is going to have a token of type string and as well as email then i navigate back to confirm email dot component and instead of these two i remove these two and we are going to have const confirm email and the type is confirm email so i bring confirm email from my models is equals an object and the object is token and for the token we have prams dot get and token so the same way as i showed you for the console log and we are going to have an email and for the email we are going to take it from the email prams inside our url then we are going to call account service and we are going to have a confirm email so i say this dot account service dot confirm email and we are going to pass confirm email model to that and then we use from subscribe and then i put the curry brace but we need to create the confirm email method inside my account service so i copy the name into my clipboard and i open my account service and just underneath of register we are going to create that model so i paste the name and this is expecting to receive a model of type confirm email so i 
print confirm email model and then inside here we are returning this dot http dot put and inside my parentheses we are using backtick and i'm gonna copy this and i paste it down here but instead of register we are going to have confirm dash email and we have to pass the model so confirm email is complete over here so after here i navigate back to confirm email component dot yes and then i add a new line inside carry brace and we are going to have next and inside next we are going to have a response of type any so if we have a response that means the api has sent something to us so if i open my account controller and this is the okay message that we are going to receive and that's exactly our response over here so we are going to make a use of the notification that we have created earlier inside shared service so i say this dot shared service dot show notification and show notification is taking three arguments one of them is success so this is success is true because this is a success message then we have response dot value dot title and we have response dot value dot message and for the error then we have error and we are going to have error as well then we are going to say this dot success is false so we need to create this property so i copy this and just above here i'm going to have a success and we initialize it to true so this is a property that we are going to use inside our html then we are going to say this dot share service dot show notification and this time we are showing an error message so we say is success is false and then for the title we say failed and for the message we are passing error dot error and then i open my confirm email component dot html and then i remove the p tag and instead we are going to have a div and for the class is container text center and we are going to have an if statement just above so i say asterisk ng if success if the message was success then we are going to have a a tag so i say a class of btn btn primary and we are going to give the router link of account login and we have the login as a value for this a tag and then underneath this div we are going to have another div and the class is exactly the same so i copy these two classes and i paste it down here and we are going to have asterisk ng if is not success so i put a question mark and i put success so if the success was false then display this a tag and we have a class of btn btn link and we are going to give it a click event and we are going to call resend email confirmation link then inside the value for this a tag we have click here to resend email confirmation link so we need to create this method so i copy this and inside my confirm email component just down here i'm going to create this method and for now we're not uh, finishing this part uh, we finish this part in the next tutorial so if the success was failure then we are providing the user in order to resend the email confirmation link so if i open my postman so we have a recent email confirmation link so that's exactly what we are trying to do so i'm gonna save everything and let's see so as soon as i navigate back to the browser then i can see email confirmed because because if i open my confirm email component at the beginning of ng on init then we are checking if the user has not been populated so this if condition is not going through so we are going to the else part then inside the else part we are taking out the token and email from the url and we are going to put it inside a model called confirm email of type confirm email and then we are going to call the account service and inside the account service we are going to call confirm email and we are passing the confirm email and that confirm email contains the token and email and then we are going to subscribe and this confirm email if i navigate to the definition then this is going to call our api endpoint 
which is confirm email and this is going to pass the mother and it is using http put so if i open my account controller then we have http put and confirm email and we are going to receive the model so if i navigate back to component.ts and that message was success so we are showing the success message and we show the title and as well as the message so that's why we have seen this email confirm and if i examine my database then i can see email confirm is true so i'm going to reconfirm my email so if i click ok and if i refresh this page I can see failed. Your email was confirmed before. Please log into your account. And that's exactly the same message that we are receiving over here. So if the email was true. So now I would like to do another test and I'm going to update my user and set the email confirm to false. So I say update. So I have manually updated my database and I set the email confirm to false. If I open my browser and I'm going to remove some of the characters from the token in order to make a bad request or invalid token. So, and as soon as I enter, then I can see failed invalid token. Please try again. And if I click OK, then I can see click here to resend email confirmation link. And that's exactly what we have seen over here. Okay, let's have this situation inside our login. For example, if the user tries to log in, but their email was not confirmed. So we're going to have the same click here to resend email confirmation link. So in that case, I open my login.component.html and inside my error messages, I'm going to have a tag of class btn btn link. Then we are going to give it a click event and we name as recent email confirmation link. Then I close my A tag and this is going to have an if condition. So I say after ng if and I say error messages in the index of zero dot includes. Then I open my API and I navigate to my login. And if that error message includes, please confirm your email. So there's a typo here. So I put R here and I save my account controller and I click on hot reload and then I copy this into my clipboard and then I open my visual studio code and I paste it over here if the error message includes please confirm your email then we are going to have click here So we're going to have click here to resend email confirmation link in case you didn't receive it. I'm going to create this uh, function inside my login.component.ts then just underneath everything I'm going to have this function. And inside this function we are going to navigate to another component that we are going to create right now. So I open my terminal and inside my account. I'm going to have a component that is called send email and that send email is responsible for sending email. Since we have two email send functionality and one is for resending the email confirmation and the other one is for forgotten username or password. So we are going to create a component that is responsible for both scenarios. So I'm going to have NGGC and we name it as send email and we skip test so we have nggc send email and skip test so this has created my send email component and then i open my account routing module and i copy this down and instead of confirm email we have send email and then we are passing a mode inside our send email so i have forward slash colon and I name it as mode then the component is send email component so I bring email component and as I said send email component is responsible for both forgot username or password or resend email confirmation link so basically this has two purposes 
and we determine of each purpose by passing the mode. Then I open my send email component.ts and inside here we are implementing on init and then we are going to have a constructor and inside constructor we are having account service, shared service, form builder and router and as well as activated route. So I have injected all these services and as well as form builder and router and activated route. Then just above here, we have email form of type form group is new form group. And then we initialize it with empty object. Then we have submitted is false. Then we have mode as I talked earlier. And this is either string or undefined and we are going to retrieve the mode through our URL. And then we have error messages of type string array and we initialize it to empty array. Then inside my ng on init, as usual, we are going to check if the user has logged in. So we try not to show this component if the user has logged in and they try to manually navigate to, to this component. So we say this dot account service dot user dollar we use from pipe and take once again and we subscribe and the inside subscription we have next and user of type user or null then if user then this dot router dot navigate by url and navigate to the home page so if the user has already logged in then navigate to the home page else we try to retrieve the mode so we say const mode is this dot activated route dot snapshot dot pram map dot get and we are looking for mode and if mode is not empty then this dot mode is mode and then we have this dot initialize form and we're going to create this function so just below here we have initialized form and we have this dot email form in fact, I'm going to do copy and pasting. So I open my register.component.ts and inside register form, I'm going to copy this and I navigate back and then I paste it over here. And instead of register form, we have email form and we are only getting the email. So I remove the other three properties and we have only email and I bring the validators. So I navigate to my confirm email component.ts and inside resend email confirmation link then we have this dot router dot navigate by url and we are navigating to account forward slash send email the component that we just created and we are passing the mode and the mode is resend email confirmation link so this is the mode that we are going to pass to this send email and I'm going to copy this and we are going to have the same navigated by URL inside our login dot component. So in here we are going to have the same and if I open my send email component that yes, then just above here, I'm going to console log my mode. So I say this dot mode. So once we have set the mode equals to mode then we are going to console.log that mode so i save everything so i navigate to my browser and then this time i'm going to click here so click here to resend email confirmation link and once i click and this is the mode that i have console log that and we are receiving the mode through the url so if i go back to my account routing module we are saying that the mode is being passed through the URL after the forward slash. And if I open send email that component, then we are getting that mode through the snapshot and pram maps, and we get the mode. And we check if the mode is not empty, then we set our property mode into that. And we are console logging that. So I remove my console log. And then we are going to have a send email. So send email is when the form is submitted. And we say this.submitted is true. This.error messages 
is empty error messages so basically we're trying to do the same as we have done inside login and register so if i open my login or register we are trying to do the same so we are setting the submitted to true and empty the error messages and, and then we are trying if the model is valid then try to call some function inside our account service that's exactly what we are doing inside send email so i open my send email component.ts and then i'm going to check if this dot email form is valid and also i'm checking if this dot mode is not empty because we have set the mode to be undefined at the beginning and then we check if this dot mode dot includes if includes recent email confirmation so in fact i'm going to copy and paste from my login.component i and i'm going to copy this so we're not going to have any spelling mistake so i copy this and i head back to my send email then i paste it here if the mode includes this then try to execute the following code and the following code is this dot account service dot resend email confirmation link and then we pass this dot email form dot get email dot value and then we try to subscribe and i just put the query brace and we need to create this function inside our account service so i copy this and i head back to my account service and underneath my confirm email i'm going to have resend email confirmation link and this is expecting to receive an email of type string then i'm going to copy the http dot put and i paste it down here and instead we are going to have post and we are going to call resend email confirmation link so i open my visual studio and inside my account controller we are going to call this endpoint so i copy this and i head back and i paste it over here inside my recent confirmation link and then we have forward slash and dollar sign care brace and we pass the email and since this is a post we need to pass an empty object so i remove model and i pass an empty object because we are calling an http post endpoint so we need to have an empty object passed via http post then i head back to send email component.ts then we have next and we have response of type any and then we have this dot shared service dot show notification and this time show a success message so we have true and we have response dot value dot title and we have response dot value dot message and navigate the user back to login so we say this dot router dot navigate by url and navigate back to account forward slash login and for any error so we have error of error then I'm gonna borrow some code from my register component. So I'm going to check if error.error.errors, then put the errors inside my error messages, else just push it to my error messages. And we have covered this in the earlier lectures. So I paste that over here. So send email component.ts is complete. And now let's try to finish send email.component.html. So I open this and we are gonna remove the p tag and then we have p dot p flex and then we are going to have a if condition so i say assert ng if and if we have a mode since the mode is either undefined or it has been initialized to some string so we're checking if the mode is initialized then display the entire div then we have div and after my div we have a main section and the class is form signing so basically i'm trying to create the same form as we have created inside my register.component.ts so you can do some copy pasting or just code along with me so i head back to send email component.html and then we are going to have a form and this is form group of email form 
and class is form signing and we have ng submit and we call send email and autocomplete off then we have div and we have h1 and then we have a span and inside the span we are going to have ng if and we check if mode dot includes if the mode includes so i open my component dot yes then i copy this if the mode includes recent email confirmation link so i head back to my html and if the mode includes this then display the following we say recent email confirmation link and after my div we are going to have another div so i put a couple of new lines and then i'm gonna borrow some code from my register component and i'm gonna borrow the email part so i copy this and i head back to send email component of html and i paste that over here and we're gonna fix the error messages so instead of register form we have email form so I copy my email form and then I paste it anywhere I see register form. So this is only having one input field and that is called email. And we are basically doing some check. If the form is empty, then type email is required. So we have a name. Instead, we have email is required. And we have invalid email address. Then I'm going to have another new lines after my div and i open my register.component.html and since i'm here i'm gonna just uh, correct this so we say email is required so i remove name and then i head down and i'm gonna borrow this to div and i head back to my send email.component.html and i paste it over here so the error message is uh, fine but for the button we are going to use from row so i instead of that class we have class of row and then i have if dot class of call six and i enter then we have div dot b grid and i hit enter and i cut my button and i paste it over here and we have btn btn block and btn success and the type is submit but the value is send then we copy my entire call and then i paste it down here and for the second button we have type is button and the class is danger and the value is cancel so in case the user has decided to cancel this action and we have a click event of cancel so we need to create cancel so I copy this and I open my send email component.ts and after my send email we are going to have cancel and if the user has decided to cancel then we say this dot router dot navigate by URL and just navigate the user back to the login and I believe that is enough so I save everything and let's try so I open my browser and we have a form recent email confirmation link so i'm gonna check my database so i select everything from identity asp.net user and the email should be zero otherwise we're gonna see some error message so i'm going to type my test email inside here and i try to send and once i send i can see confirmation link sent and if i check my email address then i can see i have received a new email and then i navigate back to the browser and i'm gonna navigate back to that uh, recent email confirmation link so i press back and if i do some bad email then i can see invalid email address and if i try to send with not registered email address if i send then I can see this email address has not been registered yet. But if I try to update my user and update the email confirmation to one, so if I execute this, and if I try to resend confirmation link once again, so I copy this, my test email account, 
and if I send, then I can see your email address was confirmed before. Please log into your account. And we are going to handle reset password next. Okay, let's handle reset password. So I'm gonna close all the tabs. And then I open send email components. This component is responsible for both resend email confirmation link and reset password. We are going to determine what task to do based on the mode that we are passing through the URL. So after my if statement, I'm going to have else if, then I copy this and I paste it down here. And instead we are going to have forgot dash username dash or dash password. If that is the case, then we do the following. And we say this dot account service dot forgot username or password and we pass this dot email form dot get email and we pass the value and then we subscribe and I put a curl brace and I enter a new line and then I need to create this method inside my account service so I copy this and I head back to my account service and just below recent email confirmation link we are going to have pretty much the same so i paste the name and then we are going to receive email as string and then i can copy this line and i paste it down here and instead of http post we are having http put and for the endpoint we are going to have reset password so i substitute that with reset password and then we have forward slash and email. And since we are using HTTP put, that's the same as HTTP post. And we have to send a model. And since we're not sending any model or not receiving any model inside our API, so we are only sending an empty object. And that is the must. So we have to send an object along with HTTP put or HTTP post. And then I head back to send email component.ts. Then we have next and response of type any. And then we have this.shared service dot show notification. And we are showing a true message. And we have response dot value dot title. And we have response dot value dot message. And then we navigate the user back to the login. So I can say this dot router dot navigate by URL and to account forward slash login. And for error, in fact, I'm going to put a comma and then I'm going to copy this all the way and then I paste it down here. So I remove this extra new line and this is my error. And I try to reformat, so I press Alt Shift F, and this has reformatted my code. And for an error, we are going to do the same as we have done over here. And then I open send email component.html, and just above here, I'm going to have another if statement for a span. So I copy this and I paste it down here, and then I head back to send email component. And I copy this, so in order not to make some mistake, and then I head back to the HTML and I paste it down here. So if the mode includes this, then display another message for the label. We can say retrieve. Then I open login.component.html and inside my forgot username or password. Inside the A tag, we can have a router link and we can have account for a slash send email for a slash forgot username or password. So I paste that text over here as well. And if I save everything, then I navigate to my browser. And if I click on login, and we have a link for God username or password. If I click here, then we will be navigated to send email component. And we are passing this time for God username or password. And since we are receiving that for God username or password, then we can see retrieve 
your username or password as a label. So I'm going to check my database and my email is confirmed. So in order to retrieve username or password, the email must be confirmed. So if I open Visual Studio and if I navigate to forgot username or password, we are checking if the email is false, then return a bad request. So the email must be confirmed. That's why I checked over my database. And then I head back to the browser and I'm going to try to send forgot username or password email. So I paste my test account and I and I receive an error message. So if I check my API, we are using from HTTP post. But if I go back to my Visual Studio code and, and inside my account service, then we are using HTTP put. So this has to be post. Then I am calling another endpoint called reset password. So that was a mistake by me. I'm going to correct that. So I open Visual Studio code and I copy and paste the endpoint and this endpoint is HTTP post. So if I navigate back to account service, then instead of reset password, we are going to call forgot username or password. And instead of put, we have to have post. And if I save and then I navigate back to the browser and I paste the test account. And if I send, then I can see forgot username or password email sent. So I can check my email address by coming to my email address and I can see forgot username or password. And then if I click here, then this is the link that we have to handle in this section. And we need to create a component called reset password. So I navigate back to my Visual Studio code and inside my account folder, I'm going to have ngGC reset password. And I skip test. Then I open my account wrapping module and I copy this down and for the path, so I remove this, we have reset password and the component is reset password. So make sure the path is reset dash password and the component is reset password. Then I open reset password.component.ts and in here I'm going to implement an init and I bring the interface. And then I have a constructor and I put a new line over here. Then I open send email component and inside the constructor. So we're gonna have pretty much the same services. So I copy all this inside the constructor and I head back to reset password component. But yes, then I paste those inside the constructor and I put control dot and I select add all missing imports. And then I remove this throw and instead we have this dot account service dot user dollar dot pipe and take. So we take the first element and we subscribe. And inside next we have user of type user or not. And then if user, then navigate back to the home component. So I say navigate by URL and I navigate to the home component. And inside else. We are going to fetch the token and email from the URL. So we have this dot activated route dot query params map dot subscribe and inside next we have params of type any and then we have this dot token is params dot get and we are looking for token and I copy this one more time and this time we have this dot email and we are going to get the email address from the query prompts. So at the top of my component, I put a new line and then we have reset password form of type form group is new form group and I initialize with empty object. Then we have token of type string or undefined and we have email of type string or undefined. And then we have submitted is false and then error messages of type string array and we initialize to empty array. Then I scroll down and we are going to have initialize for and this is taking username and our username is basically the email address. And for my form, I'm going to borrow some code inside my send email. So I open send email component.ts 
and I copy this into my clipboard and I head back to reset password form and I paste it down here and instead of email form we have reset password form and we have email but this time we are going to initialize our email into the username that we are receiving so instead of initializing with empty string I remove all this and then we have curly brace and we have value colon username and then we are going to set this email form as disabled so the user cannot edit the email form so we say disabled is true and then we have new password as the next input and we initialize to empty and then we have two validators so I put a square bracket and then we have validators so I bring validators from angular form and we have required and then we have validators dot min length of 6 and validators of max length 15 so basically we have three validators one of them is required min length and max length and just inside my next after here I'm going to check if this dot token and double ampersand this dot email so if this dot token or this dot email is not empty or undefined then we are going to call this dot initialize form and we are passing the email address so we say this dot email and for the submission we have reset password so i create my reset password and then i open my reset password dot component dot html and i remove this p tag then i'm gonna borrow some code from my send email dot component dot html so i open that send email component dot html and i'm gonna copy all this and i copy into my clipboard then i head back to reset password dot component dot html and i paste that over here so i'm gonna do some modification to here first of all we are going to check if we have token and email so i put token and double ampersand and email then our form is called reset password form so i bring that over here and for the submit we are calling reset password and then i remove all these two span and for the title we have change your password and our first input is email but we're not doing any validation because that is a disabled input so we can remove all these two span and as well as the class is invalid so we're not doing any validation there but the form control is email and then i can borrow some code from register.component.html so i open this file and then i scroll up and then I copy the password form floating. So the entire div of my password, I copy this into my clipboard. And then I head back to reset password.component.html. And just below my email, I'm going to paste that in here. And then we fix the issues. So register form should be substituted by reset password form. And I copy this and I paste anywhere that I see register form. And the form control name is new password so i have new and capital password so if i check reset password dot component we have new password so i copy this and for the placeholder we have new password and then inside here this get and inside my get we have new password so make sure you paste over here as well and the label is for new password and we can label it as new password and for my reset password that get also i put new password and we can say new password is required and down here we can have new password and as well as for the has error max length and then here we can say new password must be at least 6 or 15 characters and then I scroll down and for cancel we can remove this so we can directly make a use of router link and we can forward the user to login in order the user has decided to cancel so if I save all 
and I navigate back to my browser, then I can see the email address is disabled. And we are taking the email address from the URL. So if I go back all the way, so this is my test account and we are receiving that as over here. And if I go back all the way back here, then this is the token and we are retrieving that token and storing into our component. For example, if I don't have a token, so I remove this token and I enter, then we don't see anything since we're checking if we have a token and email address. So we can navigate a URL back to the login. So if I come back to resetpassword.component.ts and inside here, after my if statement, we can have else, then I can navigate back the user to the login page. So I copy this and I paste it here and then we can have account login. So if I say, and then we will be navigated back to the login since we don't have any token. So I'm gonna click here one more time in order to have a proper URL. And then I close my second tab, so we don't need that. And I'm gonna finish reset password.component.ts next. Okay, let's finish uh, reset password.component.ts. So I navigate back to reset password.component.ts and, and then inside reset password, we have this that submitted is true. Then we have this that error messages is empty error message. Then we have if this that reset password form is valid and this dot email and this dot token. Then we have const model of reset password and we need to create this model so i copy my reset password into clipboard then inside my account folder inside underneath of models i'm gonna have another model so i select new file and then we have reset password.ts but in fact this has to be lowercase r and then we have export interface and i paste reset password and we're gonna have token of type string, email of type string, and new password of type string. Exactly the same model as we are receiving inside reset password DTO. So I head back to reset password.component.ts and for token we have this dot token. And for email we have this dot email. And for new password, we have this dot reset password form dot get and we take new password. And we put this question mark and dot value. So we have an error message and we need to bring the reset password. So I put control dot and we can have add import from the path of the model. Then we have another error. So if I go back to reset password, then I am missing L over here. And for the new password, so I am missing A over here. And that's the beauty of TypeScript. So it just tells us what error messages we have right away. And then I put semicolon. And here we have this account service that reset password that I need to create. And we pass the model. And then we subscribe and I open and close curly brace and I need to create my reset password inside my account service. So I copy this and I head back to account service and underneath of forgot username or password, I have reset password. And this is taking a model of reset password. And then we have return this.http.put and then I can borrow some code from here. So I copy all this and I paste it down here. Then this time we are going to call reset password and we're not using any forward slash, but instead as a model, we pass the model that we have over here. And then I head back to reset password.component.ts and for next we have response of type any and then we have this dot share service dot show notification 
the first is true and response dot value dot title then we have response dot value dot message and then we navigate the user back to the login so i say this dot router dot navigate by url and go to the forward slash account forward slash login and then i have a error of error and for my error message i'm going to borrow some code from send email so i'm gonna copy all these five lines of code then i head back to reset password and i paste it over here and then i navigate back to reset password.component.html and inside my submit button instead of send we have change password and then i save all the files and i open my browser so i'm going to reset my password for my test account so i'm gonna have six five four three two one and if i send so i can see an error and it says cannot find control with name new password so if i open my reset password.component.ts so i have made another mistake so this is new password so i put new p-a-s-o-w-r-d so instead this has to be new password and if i save and i'm gonna try one more time so now we have received password reset success and we can see your password has been reset so i'm gonna try with my new password now i can see i can log in to my test account and i can log out from that so some explanation over here so inside my reset password first of all we try to see if the user has been logged in so if the user is logged in then navigate back to the home page otherwise we don't want to display the reset password so we're not displaying reset password component if the user has been logged in and they try to manually paste the url inside the browser for example if i'm logged in so right now i am logged in but if i try to go to this url and if i hit enter then we are redirecting the user back to the home page so we're not letting any logged in user to access to reset password component that's what we are doing over here and then we are going to fetch the token and email from the query prompts so i'm gonna log out this time and then I'm gonna go back to the reset password and if I hit enter then we are taking the token from the URL and as well as the email then we pass the email to the initialized form and this initialized form is taking username as a string and it's going to populate the initial value for email based on the argument that we have received and it is going to set the input field as disabled so the user cannot modify this input field that's why we haven't put any validation for this input field so i cannot change this input field and then we have a new password and the new password has some validation and if i open my new password that component of html at the beginning we are checking if the token and email are populated then we have the first input and the second input is the new password and then we are displaying the validation and and then we are displaying the buttons one of them is change password and one of them is cancel and this has brought to the end of this section so we are going to commit our changes so i open my visual studio and inside my git changes so i start the application and then i have And then I put the following message section 06 email confirmation and reset password in client app. Then I commit R and I push that into GitHub. Okay, in this section, we are going to handle Facebook login and registration, and as well as Google login and registration. First of all, we work with Facebook and we finish Facebook, then we move on with Google. For Facebook login, we need to have running at HTTPS. So 
at the moment our angular website is running on http so if i open my visual studio code you can see this is our client side url so it is using http but we need to have https in order to be able to use facebook login so we need to convert this into https so if i navigate to my browser and i open a new link then inside google just search for make stir so when you search for make stir then the first github you can open the link and navigate to that and then if you scroll down so there is some installation guideline for windows i'm using windows but depending on your operating system you can choose whatever is available for your operating system so i'm using windows and for windows we need to install chocolatey first so if i open this link then i can click on install and inside the step two this, these are the requirements and inside the install chocolatey for individual use we have to follow these procedures first of all we need to open powershell as an administrator so I right click on PowerShell and I run as administrator. Then it tells the run get execute policy. So I copy this and inside my PowerShell, I paste it out here. And it says unrestricted. And it says if it returns restricted, then execute the following command. So since mine is unrestricted, then I don't need to do that. And then it says run the following command. So you copy this command and you paste it into your PowerShell and i already have done that so i'm not going to do this but after you do this then you can type choco inside your powershell and then you can see the chocolatey and the version number so that's the verification that choco has been installed on my machine so i close my powershell then i navigate to my project folder and inside my client app so i double click on client app and i open command prompt from there so i put cmd over here then i'm going to create a folder called ssl and we are going to put our ssl key into that ssl folder so i open my visual studio and i minimize all the folders so i click on src and inside here so make sure you click on any verb from here and create a new folder so i click on here and i type as ssl so we have created SSL folder inside our client app folder. And then we can navigate to SSL folder. So I say CD SSL. So we can navigate to that. And then I open the browser. And at the same time, I open my command prompt. And then I can say choco install make cert. And then I say yes. Then it says um, Mixer is already installed. So I have installed Mixer previously, but you might see Mixer installed successfully or some other messages. And then you can create your SSL by using Mixer localhost. So if you put Mixer localhost, then it has created localhost.pem and as well as localhost dash key dot pm so if i open my visual studio code and inside my ssl then i can see i have two more five and these are my ssl self-signed certificates so we need to open angular.json and then inside my angular.json i'm gonna scroll down until i see serve so at line 68 i can see serve and then after that i can see builder so just right after builder we are going to have i press enter and then we are going to have options and then inside the curly brace we have ssl cert so i select this one and inside here we have ssl folder forward slash localhost dot pem so basically this file i'm going to say this is my certificate this is my this certificate and then we have comma and then we have SSL key and inside the quotation we have SSL folder forward slash localhost dash key dot PEM 
and this is the key for my certificate and then we can have another comma and inside SSL so I type SSL and we can say true so by this we are telling that our angular is running using HTTPS and take those key and cert from these files so I'm gonna save my angular.json and then we need to stop the angular application since we have modified our angular.json and restart our angular applications so I press Control C and then I'm gonna ng serve one more time so as soon as our angular is running then I can see potential security risk ahead so I click on advance and I can accept the risk and continue and then we are running our angular using https and after we are running on https then we need to modify our api project as well so i open visual studio and then inside solution explorer inside app settings.development.json so uh, this is the client url and we are using http over here so i need to put s after http and then i can restart my api project and let's give it a quick shot and make sure everything is working so i'm gonna log in and then i can see everything is working as it used to be okay now let's handle registering and logging with facebook so first of all you need to have a facebook account otherwise you won't be able to do that and once you have a facebook account and then we open a new tab and inside the new tab we type facebook developer and then i hit enter and the first link it says meta for developers i click on this and then you need to log in so you might create an account or register if you don't have developers.facebook but you can use from your own facebook account and once you have logged in then you can click on my app and after you click on my apps then you can click on create app then from here you choose consumer and inside consumer then you can see connect consumer products and permission like facebook login and instagram basic so you choose consumers and then you click next and inside here choose the name of your app so i name it as identity app and then this is your email that you have created your facebook account and then i click on create app and from here choose facebook login so click on setup and then you can ignore this page and from facebook login you can click on settings and inside here you have to copy and paste the url of your client app so i navigate to my client app and then i copy this and i paste it over here and then you have to paste it over here as well so in two valid auth redirect urls and allow domains for java sdks and then you select yes for here so logging with the java script sdk and then click on save changes since our app is in development mode then if i hover over here it says in development mode your app can only request data from users with an app role to request end user data your app must have advanced access permission and be set to live mode so since we are doing development only my account that i just created this app can register with facebook and try to log in with facebook otherwise if you would like to add some other test accounts you have to click on app roles and then click on roles And inside roles you need to add some test accounts over here so you you need to have actually an another account inside facebook in order to add it over here before you could use to create some dummy test users without creating an actual account or facebook account but right now it doesn't let you to do that anymore so if i for example click create test account and i click create test users then it says the ability to create test user is disabled temporarily so for now you cannot do this from this approach the only way 
is click on roles for example i would like to test with another facebook account then inside testers i can click on add testers and then inside this input you have to put the facebook user or the id so you can either put the username or the id of the person you would like to add so this is so this is my another test user that already has a facebook account so if i click submit then it tells pending then you have to log in with your test account and accept that so i'm going to do this right here so the other account has to have facebook developer as well and then you have to click on my apps then click on this drop down and click on settings and then you can navigate to request and then it tells that this alex thompson which is my other facebook account that i have created identity app it tries to add you as a tester and you can accept and once you accept then you can navigate back to the other tab and refresh here and then the pending is gone so that means within your this application that you just created on this user and as well as this user can log in and no other user can log in but for the production when we want to deploy our application i'm going to tell what to do in order to switch development to live and what other things you need to do inside here but for now we keep it as development and then you can select on settings and click on basics and this is your app ID and app secret. So you need to copy your app ID and then I open my Visual Studio. Then inside app settings, I'm going to have comma, Facebook, and then I have curly brace. And inside here, I have app ID and I paste it over here. Then I have comma, then app secret. And inside here, I navigate back to the Facebook account and i show my app secret so please don't reveal this with any others unless you need to reset your app secret so you can click reset then it automatically reset your app secret then you can copy and paste the new app secret so right now i'm going to copy this and i paste it over here and again i told you one time before so you can make a use of secrets in order not to push this uh, app id and app secrets to your github but since i'm going to reset my app secret so i don't mind to reveal my secret then i'm going to save all the files and then we can close developers.facebook so we don't need this tab anymore and in order to be able to log in with facebook you need to add some sdk into your angular inside google i search for facebook create login button and i search and the first link so if i click here then we have been navigated to docs facebook login web login buttons then i scroll down and and you need to be logged in then i click on get code and once you click on get code then you need to copy the script tags into your clipboard so don't copy the div only copy the script tag so i copy this and i open my visual studio code and then i open src and i open index.html and just after my link i'm going to have pasted that script tag over here and make sure this app id is the same as the app id that you have inside your app settings so this app id is exactly the same as that i have over here so you can see app id and then save the index.html then you will be able to implement the facebook login right now okay in this video we are trying to register with facebook so i open app and i open account and then i open register and inside register.component.html after my form, I can have div dot, and then I have, and inside my div, I have hr, and then I have div dot, 
and after my second div i have another div and i have hr and after my justify content then i have another div and the class is the same as this one so i copy this into my clipboard and then i paste it over here but instead of margin top we have margin y so top and bottom for three and then i have a div and this is for google so we implement that later and i have a button i give it some style and class is and inside my button i have facebook and then we can give it some click event so i say click and register with facebook and i need to create my register with facebook method inside my register.component.ts so after my register so i have a new line here i remove this and then after this closing curly brace i have register with facebook and i put the parentheses and i open and close the curly brace then i save all my files and i'm going to see what i have so far and inside my browser if i click on create account i can see facebook and if i open my html then instead of center it should be between and if i save then this has pushed my facebook to the edge so we have create account or sign up using facebook or google and if i click nothing happens at the moment and then I open my Visual Studio code and inside register.component.ts so I navigate to the top and inside just underneath all the imports then I can have declare const fb of type any since we are going to make a use of fb.login so for Facebook login we need to declare this and then I scroll down to the register with Facebook and in here I can have fb.login and I can have async and inside here I have fb result of type any and then I have an arrow and curly brace then I can have console.log fb result so I save and I navigate back to the browser and this time I'm going to open my console and if I click on Facebook then it is going to authenticate ourselves into Facebook and it says continue as Alex, the name of your Facebook account. If I click continue, then I can see a response. And inside my response, we have auth response. And inside auth response, we have access token and as well as the user ID. So we are going to make a use of access token and as well as user ID inside our API in order to validate the user and set the username of whoever is trying to register with Facebook to their user ID. And this is the user ID of his Facebook account. So I navigate back to the Visual Studio code. Then over here, I'm going to check. So basically I'm going to check if we have auth response, some value. So this might be null if we didn't successfully log into Facebook. So as you can see, auth response that object has some value. So inside here, instead of console log, I can say keep fp result dot auth response. So make sure of the spelling since we're not using any type safety here and everything is JavaScript right now. And then here we can do some action. Else we can show a notification that it was unable to register with Facebook. I can have this dot shared service dot show notification and we have false message and as a title we can say failed and as a message we can say unable to register with your facebook but if it was successful then we can take out the access token and user id from the auth response so i can say const access token is fp result dot auth response dot access token and then i can copy this one more time and we have user id so i put uh, lowercase d but inside fp result dot auth response this is user id with capital id both i and d so if i navigate to my browser and if i examine the auth response 
inside here we can see this is user id with capital id but for my preferences i'm using lowercase d so that's why i put lowercase d and then we can navigate user to another component called register with third party so we need to create another component so inside my second terminal so i open that and i navigate to account and inside here i'm going to have nggc register dash with dash third dash party and i skip test so this component is responsible for registering for both facebook and google so when i hit enter then i can see register with third party has been created for me over here and then i open my account routing module and we can have a path for that so i copy this down and and i remove reset password and we can have third party as a path then forward slash and column provider so we are going to differentiate between facebook and google by using the provider the same way as we have used inside send email so instead of reset password we have register with third party component so i select this one and i import it's going to import this automatically for me then i navigate back to my register.component.ps and after here we have this dot router dot navigate by url and and we can have a back tick and we navigate the user to account register forward slash third party forward slash and we provide the provider so this in this case we have facebook and then i put question mark and we can pass the access token and user id through the url so i say access underscore token equals and then we have dollar sign and curly brace and we select access token and then i can have and person and user id and i have dollar sign and user id and i put a semicolon over here so if i save everything and i navigate back to my browser so I'm going to close my console and as soon as I hit Facebook, then I can see not found. And the reason is if I navigate to account routing module, so we need to put register at the beginning. So I put register forward slash. And if I save and I try this one more time, then I can see register with third party works. And we have the Facebook as a provider and access token and as well as the user ID at the end. Okay, let's complete our register with third body component. So I open register with third body component.ts and I can close all other tabs. Then inside here we have implements on any and we are going to implement interface. And just above here we can have constructor. And we are going to inject account service router activated route and form builder and at the top we can have register form of time form group and we initialize to form group and we set as empty object and then we can have submitted is false then we have provider of type string or null and we set to null and then we can have access underscore token of type string or null and we set to null as well and then user id of type string or null and we set to null and then we can have error messages of type string array and we initialize to empty and then i scroll down and inside my ng on init i can have this dot account service dot user dollar dot pipe take one and then I subscribe and inside next we have user of type user so I bring user or null and then I put arrow and curly brace and I say if user so if the user is already logged in then this dot router dot navigate by URL and push the user to the home page and then we can have else and inside my else we have this dot activated route that query pram map so i select the first one then subscribe and inside next we can have prams of type any and then 
we can have this dot provider is this dot activated route dot the snapshot dot pram map dot get and provider and i put semicolon and then we can have this dot access token is prams dot get and access underscore token and i put semicolon and then we can have this dot user id is prams dot get and user id then i'm going to console dot lock this dot provider then i put semicolon and i copy it two more time and i have access token and user id and then i save and i navigate back to my browser so I can see my provider is Facebook and this is my access token, but for my user ID, it is not. So if I open my register.component.ts, so we are missing an equal sign over here. So I have to put user ID equals user ID. And if I save and I navigate back, then I need to click on create account and I need to click on Facebook. And this time if i click on facebook then i can see register with third party ports and this is my provider this is my access token and this is my user id so i can get all these three values from my url so i close my console log and i navigate back to visual studio code and inside my register with third party dot component dot ps so instead of all these three console logs i remove and then i can have if so I'm going to check if all these values are provided. So I can say if this dot provider is not null, double ampersand, this dot access token is not null, double ampersand, this dot user ID. And then I'm going to check. So if I navigate back to browser, I'm going to check if the provider is either Facebook or Google. So we need to make sure we are the proper providers. So I navigate back and inside here I can have double ampersand and I hit enter and inside a curly brace and I open and close parentheses and inside here we can have this dot provider is triple equals to Facebook and then I can have or and then this dot provider triple equals to Google. So we are going to handle Google later but since we are here, we are checking for Google as well. And then I open and close the curly brace. If this is wrong, then I can have else and this dot router dot navigate by URL and navigate back the user to the account register. So I can have account forward slash register. And we can test this as well. So if I save and I open my browser, so for example, I put Facebook with triple O and I hit enter. So as soon as I hit enter, then we will be navigated back to the register because that wasn't the case. And if I click on Facebook, then I can see register with third party works. So after the if a statement is valid, then I can have another new line and I can say this dot initialize form. And we are going to create this initialize form over here. So we have initialize form. For initializing the form, I'm going to borrow some code. So I open register.component.ts and inside initialize form, I'm going to copy all these values. And then I head back and I paste it over here. And I bring the validator. So I put control dot. And for form, we are going to have only first name and last name. So we're not using any email or password since we are validating or registering using Facebook. So we don't need to handle that. So I remove these two properties. Then I can put a semicolon at the end. And then I can have register. So if the form is submitted, then we can say this dot submitted is true. And this dot error messages is empty error message. And then we can check if this dot register form is valid. If the form is valid, then create a model called register with external and set the first name last name access token provider and user id there so we need to create a model so if i scroll down inside my shared and inside models then inside account then i'm going to create a model so i right click on an account and i hit new file and i name it as register with external.ts so normally I 
complete API and then I complete Angular. But for registering with uh, Facebook and Google, I'm doing the reverse. I complete Angular and then I complete API because we need to get the access token using the browser. Otherwise, we cannot deal with API and you will understand as we go through. So for the register with external, we can have export and this time we are making use of class. So we can initialize with constructor. Instead of interface, we select class. And then we can name it as register with external. And we are going to have first name as string. And then last name as string. And user ID as string. And access token as string. And provider as string. Then we can have a constructor since this is a class, but before it used to be interface. And for interface, we don't need to have a constructor or we cannot have a constructor. But with class, we have a constructor. So I navigate back to register with external.ts and then inside my constructor, we can have first name as string. Then I can have this dot first name is first name and I copy this four more times and the second one is last name. So I copy this and the last name equals last name and that one is user ID and this is user ID and the fourth one is access token and this is access token and the last one is provider and it equals to provider and all the error are gone. So before it was complaining about it wasn't initialized so if I comment this out and if I hover over, I can see property provider has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. But we need to assign this inside their constructor and the error is gone. Then I open account service and just underneath my register, I'm going to have register with third party. And we are receiving a model of type register with external so select this one the class that we just created and then i add a query brace and we can have return this dot http dot post and then inside parentheses i have backtick and then i can just borrow some code from here so i copy all this and i paste it down here and then we can have api forward slash account forward slash register dash with dash third party and then we have a comma and we pass the model so we haven't created this endpoint inside our api yet but we are going to do very soon and then i head back to register with third party component and if the form is valid then we can have const first name is this dot register form dot get and we are looking for first name and we can have question mark dot value and then i'm missing equal sign over here if i don't do question mark then we are going to have some error object is possibly null but since we know that this is not null since we are doing some validation then i just put question mark in order to get rid of the error message and then i can have for the last name so i copy this down and instead of first name we can have last name now i copy last name and i paste it down here and then i can create my model so i can say const model is equals register with external so select this one and if i hover over then i can see expected five arguments but got zero so we need to pass the arguments inside the parentheses so i put parentheses and the first one is first name so i select first name and the second one is last name i select last name and the third one is user id so i put comma then for the user id we have this dot user id then i put comma then we have this dot access token and then the last one is this dot provider and i put semicolon at the end and if i hover over user id i can see argument of type string or null is not assignable to string so it might be null so we can get around with this error message since we know for sure that user id is provided over here because we have checked over here if the user id is not provided then redirect back the user to the register form but 
over here since this is type script and uh, it asks for any type safety so in order to get around this we can inside my this.registerform.valid inside my if statement i can have double and person and i can say this.user id and then yeah just complains about the next one so i can have double and person this dot access token and double and person as well as this dot provider so this is redundant but this is for typescript that is complaining and then after here we can have this dot account service dot register with third party and we pass the model and then we subscribe and inside subscription so inside next we have response and then we console.log response and then we have comma error of error then then for my error i borrow some code inside the register component and i copy all these and i paste it down inside with third party okay now let's handle register with third party component.html so i open that and inside here i'm going to get rid of the p tag then I'm going to borrow some code. So I open register.component.html and I copy the whole thing. And then I head back to register with third party and I paste it down here. Then at the beginning, we are going to have ng if. So I put asterisk ng if. And we are going to check if the provider double ampersand access underscore token double ampersand and user ID. If all these values are populated, then display the entire div. And my form is register form, so this remains the same. And then inside my H3, so I get rid of this, and I can say creating then first name and last name remains the same. But we don't have email and password, so I get rid of these two div for email and password. And we have the error messages as same. And we have create account. And I'm going to get rid of these two div as well. So I remove all this here. And if I save, then I can navigate to my browser and take a look. So I can see create an account using your Facebook. And then we have to put first name and last name in order to submit the form. So if I click create account, then we can see all the validation over here. And now let's create our endpoint inside our API. So I will open Visual Studio and you need to stop the application. Then open account controller. And just under this of register, so look for register. Then on the list of register, I'm going to have HTTP post and we name it as register dash with dash third dash party. And then we have public async task of action result. And then we have user DTO. So we are going to send the user DTO right away after the user is trying to register with a third party. But before for register, we were trying to send an email in order to confirm the email address. But for third party registration, we're not confirming the email. After here, we have the name as register with third party. And then we are going to receive a model of register with external and we name it as model. Then I copy the name into my clipboard. Then under list of details and account, I'm going to create that class over here. So, and I paste the name register with external. And here I put a new line and I'm gonna borrow some code from register detail. So I open register detail and I copy first name and last name. And I head back to register with external and I paste it over here. So we have the first name, last name, and we have required prop a string of access token and i copy this and i paste it two more time and the next one is user id and the last one is provider so the provider is either google or facebook so in order not to make some typo i'm going to create a class and 
put all my constant variables there. So I right click on API project and I hit add and class. And then I name it as SD. So this contains all my constant variable. So over here we have public const string of Facebook. And we initialize it to Facebook. And I copy this and I put it one more time and we have Google. And for the value we have Google as our lowercase. And this class is a static. So I put static at the beginning. So we have public static class SD. And this contains all the static details or const variables that we are going to use inside our application. Then I head back to account controller and we have brought register with external model. Then inside here, I'm going to check if model.provider.equals st, then we need to bring st and we have Facebook. So if the model is Facebook, the provider of the model, then do the following. Else if model.provider.equals st.google and if this is for Google, then do the following. And else we are returning a bad request and we say invalid provider. So the provider has to be either Facebook or Google. Otherwise, we're returning a bad request. Our model is going to contain all the values that we have over here. The first and last name, access token, user ID and provider. And we are going to validate the user ID and access token inside our API. So we need to call an API from Facebook in order to validate both the access token and the user ID. And if the status is success, then we are going to register the user. So inside the API, we are also going to make a call to the Facebook APIs. So as well as we have called the Facebook API inside our Angular. So if I open my register.component.ts and we have registered with Facebook and this is going to log in with Facebook and it gets some results and we are going to do almost the same inside API. So I navigate back to Visual Studio and that's why we have put our app secret and app ID inside our app settings.json. So if I open inside Facebook, we have app ID and app secret. So based on these two values and based on the access token and the user ID, we are going to validate the user. And if it is a validated user, then we are going to register the user. And if I would like to give you some example of how we are validating, uh, if I open my postman, then inside account, I can create another folder. So I select add folder and I can name it as test external login. And underneath here, I'm going to add a request and I name it as verify Facebook from token. And inside the URL, we are going to have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash graph dot Facebook dot com forward slash debug underscore token. And then inside params, I'm going to have for my first params, we have input underscore token. And for my second params, we have access underscore token. And inside my first input, we have to get a token from Facebook. So in order to do that, I navigate back to my Visual Studio code and inside register.component.ts, I'm going to do one more time console log. And then I console log the FB result. So I put that over here and I save, and then I navigate back to my browser and inside create account, I hit create account and I open my, and then I open my console and inside here, I click on Facebook. And then we are going to receive some objects or response and the response is of token. And this is our access token. So if I copy this, so I copy this message and inside input token, I paste that over here. So basically that's the input token from this API call. And this API call is calling Facebook. And for the access token, we have to put the app ID first, and then we put this. So basically we have app ID, and then we put this, 
and then we have app secret if i navigate to my visual studio and i make a copy of my app id and app secret and i paste it down here so i open visual studio and then inside app settings i copy my app id and i open my postman and instead of app id i put my valid app id then i copy my app secret and i put it over here and if i send so i have a typo so this has to be access token so it has to be double c access token and if i send then we can see a result and the result is okay and inside the result we can see the app id and then we can see the user id so this is the user id that we can validate inside the api and then we can see is valid true based on all this information we can validate the token that the user is providing to the api is valid based on the app id and app secret we have over here so i'm going to save this request inside my collection so we can refer to this later on and we are going to do the same approach inside our api so i minimize my postman and i head back to my account controller and then just at the top we are going to have another private variable so i say private read only http client so the type is http client and we have underscore facebook http client and inside my constructor i'm going to have underscore facebook http client is new http client and then i open and close carry brace and we can have base address so we are going to initialize the base address we have new uri and we can have https colon forward slash forward slash graph dot facebook dot com and then i put a semicolon so this is exactly the same address as i showed you inside postman and then i can create a function for my validation so over here we can make a use of that function inside over here so I scroll all the way down inside my private helper methods and just at the last I can have private async task of type boolean so it returns true or false and then we can have Facebook validated async and this is taking string of access token and a string of user ID and then we can have var Facebook is equals underscore config and we are going to inside facebook section and we put colon and app id so we take the app id and then we have plus and we put this character and then we have plus underscore and facebook colon app secret so we are going to take the app id and secret and put it inside facebook keys so the same way as i showed you over here and that's going to be our access token in this case and then we have var fb result is await underscore facebook http client the one that we created get from json async and then we have to put some type and we are going to create that very soon and we have a parenthesis and I'm going to make a use of a string interpolation. So I put dollar sign and, and then I put double quotations. And then we have debug underscore token question mark input underscore token equals. Then inside carry brace, I'm going to have access token. And then I put ampersand and we have access underscore token equals. And inside carry brace, we have Facebook keys. So if I to the right this is my url and i put a semicolon and then we have to create a model that contains some properties that we are seeing inside the response message so in order to do that i minimize my postman and then inside my details and account i'm going to create another class and i name it as facebook result dto and then inside here we have public Facebook data and we name it as data and we have get and set. Then we have underneath of this class, we have public class and we name it as Facebook data. And inside my Facebook data, we have two properties. One is prop of Boolean and we name it as is underscore valid. 
and then the next property is public string and user underscore id that is exactly the same as we see over here so this is the data and we are only interested in user id and is valid so i minimize my postman and then i head back to a can controller and then inside this angle bracket we can have facebook result dto so this is going to take the response from all these api calls and then convert that in and put it inside fp result and that our fp result contains the values that i just showed you and then i can have a new line and from there we can make a use of if fp result if the fp result is null so return false or fp result that data that is valid is false or question mark fp result that data that user id dot equals user id if all these case are true then return false otherwise return true so at first we are making sure that every result has some value if this is null then return false and then it's going to check this one if the data and inside is valid is false then return false as well and also we are going to make a use of equals and if the user id is equals and in this case is not in equals to user id that we passed so that means this is for another user and in that case return false so that's how we are validating the facebook using access token and user id that we have received from the angular so i copy this into my clipboard and i navigate back to the top and we are going to make a use of try and catch. So this might show some exceptions. So uh, that's why we use from try and catch. And we put exception and, and then inside exception, we return unauthorized. And inside my try, we are going to have if, and then I put a question mark for not, and I paste Facebook validated async, and we pass the arguments that it is expecting. So we need to pass model dot, access token and then we pass model at user id and since this is async method we can have either a wait so that's one way how to uh, make a async call or i can remove this await and and after the parentheses i can have get a waiter and then get result and that's another way to make a call to an async method. So in these two ways, we can have the same result. So if the result or return value of this method is false, then return unauthorized again. And inside my unauthorized, we are going to say unable to register with Facebook. So I copy this and I paste it inside my second unauthorized as well. And then I scroll down and after my else, so we can create the user account and for creating the user account we are going to assign the user id that we received so if i open my postman this is the user id we are going to assign this user id into that username and then we are going to add the provider to the user class as well so we need to add one more property to the class and we are going to do this in the next video so right now we are going to provide another property to our user class so i open my models and inside my user i'm going to have another property so i say pop print and i name it as provider and if i go back to my account controller then we can see we have error so in order to get rid of that error because we are going to create another migration so i just return okay for now in order to get rid of this and then i open package manager console and i'm going to add another migration and i say add migration and for the message i say adding provider into user table so i say add dash migration and i add a comment and if i examine the migration so i can see we are going to add provider column to our ASP.NET user and after here I'm going to update my database so I say update dash database and I hit enter 
then this has updated my database so if i come back to my database and i refresh my identity app so i refresh and i close this so inside tables and inside ASP.NET users if i select then we can see provider has been added and this is the provider column that we just created using migration so i close this tab and i close all other tabs so i select close all but this so i'm going to have only account controller and i'm going to remove my return okay then i'm going to check if the user is already existing so i can say bar user is await user manager then find by name async so if i select find by name async this is expecting to receive username so i can have model dot user id since i told you that we are going to store the user id as a username for any new user that is trying to register with either facebook or google and that user id is coming from facebook and then if we have that user so we can say if the user is not null, then return a bad request. And inside the message, we can have string.format. And we can say you have an account already. So we are returning a bad request of you already have an account. And please log in with your, for example, Facebook. And if this checkpoint is passed, then we are going to create our user so we can say var user to add is new user and then we can have the first name as model dot first name dot to lower and we can have the last name as model dot last name dot to lower and then we can have the username as model dot user id then we can have the provider as model dot provider and i put semicolon over here so we are assigning the user ID into our username. And then we can have var result equals await user manager dot create async. And we pass the user to add. And then we check if not result dot succeeded. Then return bad request. And we pass result dot errors. Otherwise, we return create application user DTO. And we pass the user to add. So we are going to logging the user after they try to register with third party and inside here user to add we are not having a email address over here so the email address is not and if i go back to jwt service so we can say if the email address is not so i put double question mark and just insert an empty string so this means if the email address is null, then just put empty string that's it otherwise we are going to receive some internal server error because it's try to put some null values inside our email claims but if i do this then we're not going to have any issue so at this stage i'm going to test my api i run my api application and i head back to my account controller and i'm going to put a breakpoint over here and i open my browser and then i click on create account and I choose Facebook and I put some first name and last name. And when I hit create account, then we are going to be caught inside a breakpoint. And if I hover over, then we can see we can have the access token, first name, last name, provider, and user ID. And if I step over, then it checks if the provider is equals to Facebook. So this has passed. And then we are going to go inside the try and catch. And inside here, we are going to have call Facebook validated AC. So I can put another breakpoint. So if I go to definition and I can put another breakpoint over here or I can press step into either way it works. And if I continue, then we are going to hit this private helper method. And we have received the access token and user ID. And then if I step forward and this is going to call the Facebook and it returns some results. So if I hover over my result, then we have a data and we, we can have is valid true. And we are returning the user ID from our API call to the Facebook, not from the Angular side. And then we are going to return the true value over here. So if I hit a step out, then we are going to get back to whatever it was going inside. So we will be 
come back to our register with third party then if i step over and uh, i can step over one more time and also i can step over and then we are going to check if the this user id is already existing inside my ASP.NET user so this is not so this bad request is not hitting and then we are going to create the user to add and then we are going to call user manager create async and we pass the user to add and the username is the user id that we received from facebook and then we can have the result is succeeded and we are going to return application user dto and if i continue then if i open my console this is the result that we have received and this is exactly the same user dto that we received from logging so we have the first name last name and jwt and we are going to automatically log the user in once we receive this and we are going to handle that next and if i examine my database so if i select top thousand from my ISP.NET users then i can see this is the user account that i just created and this is using the facebook user id as the username and i can see the email and normalized email is null because we haven't provided the email and we don't need to provide the email address if we have registered via facebook or gmail but when I scroll to the right, on the way, I can see the provider is Facebook. So we can determine if this user has been registered via regular registration or via third party registration by checking if the provider is null or it has some value. And now I'm going to handle logging the user and as well as log the user in whenever they have registered via Facebook. If I open Visual Studio Code, and I can close all the tabs except account service. So I say close others. And inside account service, inside register with third party, I can make a use of pipe and map. So the same way we have used from here. And inside here, we can make a use of pipe and map. So I say pipe and then inside pipe, I have map. And inside map, we are receiving user of type user. So it complains because we have to determine what type we are receiving over here so inside angle bracket i can say i am expecting to receive a user and then this has to be inside another parenthesis so i highlight those and i put that inside another parenthesis and then i'm going to have arrow and inside here we can have if user then this dot set user and we pass a user so I need to remove the account that I just created and register with Facebook one more time. So I have delete from ASP.NET users where username is this one. And then I select this and I execute. So this has been removed and I'm going to save my account service and now we get back to the browser. So I select create account and then I choose Facebook and inside here I put first name and last name and I hit create account and as soon as I create so there's a debugging so I remove my breaking and I continue and as soon as I hit create account then I can see I mark so that means we are logged in and I can see log out button but we need to navigate the user back to the home page so I can do that inside register with third party and I open register with third party component.ts and for any response that we receive that means the success so we can have this dot router dot navigate by URL and navigate the user to the home page and since we're not using any response here so we can make a use of underscore and that means we're not receiving anything or we're not assigning to any variables called response in this case and this will navigate the user back to the home page as soon as they have been registered successfully via facebook and let's handle login with facebook so i can open login.component.html and as well as i can open register.component.html so i can borrow some code so inside uh, after the form I can take all these two div tags and I copy this and inside login and after forgot username or password I can press some enter and I paste it over here and instead we can say or login using 
Facebook. So I can see I have a typo that is using and I can fix that over registration and I can fix it over here as well. And for the method, we can have login with Facebook. So instead of register, we can have login and we need to create this method. So I copy this and inside login.component.ts, just underneath of login, I can have this method. And then I open register.component.ts, then at the top, we are going to declare const fp one more time. So I head back to login and we are going to put it just underneath of our import. Then I go back to register that component that is, then I copy all this and I head back to login and just down here, I'm going to paste it over here. So we don't need to have console log. So I remove this right now and I can remove from register that component that is as well. So we're not using any console log and I head back to login and we have an error. So we need to import shared service. So if I go top, and I have comma, then I can have private shared service of type shared service. And then I head down. Then instead of redirecting the user to another component, so I remove this. So we can have the access token and user ID, that's fine. But here we can have this dot account service dot login with third party. And then we can subscribe, but we don't have that method yet, but I put the uh, subscribe and the curly brace and inside my else so we have a false notification and instead of have instead of saying unable to register we can say unable to login with your facebook and then i need to create my login with third party so i copy this into my clipboard and then i head back to account service so i open account service and just underneath of login i'm going to have login with third party so the same way as we have registered with third party. And this is expecting to receive a model of model colon login with external. And we need to create this model. So I scroll down and inside my shared, inside models, inside account, I'm going to create that model. So I hit new file. And here we have login with external.ts. Then in this model, we have export class one more time and we name it as login with external. And we have access token of type string and we have user ID of type string and we have provider of type string. And we need to create a constructor and we have access token. So I head back to my account service and we can import this model or class so i click on add import then we are going to call an api endpoint so i can say return this dot http dot post and we are expecting to receive user and then i can copy some of the code so i copy this and i paste it down here and instead of login we have login dash with dash third dash party and we are passing the model and then we can make a use of pipe and map and inside map i put another parenthesis we are receiving a user of type user and then if user then this dot set user and we pass a user so the same way as we are doing inside my login so my method has been created so i head back to my login.component.ts and inside here I'm going to create my login with external model and pass it to this method. So in here, I can say new login with external. So I can bring my login with external and I can pass the arguments to the constructor. So for the first one, we are expecting to receive access token. So I pass that and then I have comma and then we have user ID. So I have the user ID as well. And the provider is Facebook. So inside string, I put Facebook. And then inside my next, since I am making use of pipe and map inside account service, so we're not returning or expecting to receive any response. So I can make a use of underscore. Then I can check if we are receiving some return URL. So I can copy this. 
and I paste it over here. If you are receiving any return URL, then navigate the user back to the return URL else. Navigate to the home page. And for the error, I can copy this. And after my next, I can have comma and I paste it over here. And if I scroll up and inside my login, uh, we are not using any response. So I can simplify this as underscore. So I highlight all this and I just make a underscore. So underscore means we're not receiving any response or we're not expecting to receive any response. Or we can make a use of just parentheses. So these two are the same. So for one of them, I put parentheses. And for one of them, I put underscore. But they both are the same. Login.component.ts is done inside the client side. So we can, we can test this functionality. And for testing, just above here, I can have a console.log and we can console log the FB result. And let's try this. So I save all and I head back to my browser and I open my console log. And I click on login. Then we can see Facebook button as well. And as soon as I click, then this is has connected me to the Facebook and we have a auth response. But down here, uh, we are receiving HTTP post of not found because we haven't created this endpoint inside our API. So we need to handle this in the next video. Let's finish login functionality with Facebook inside API. So I head back to my Visual Studio code and I remove the console log because we have tested and we saw that is working and then I save everything. And then I open my Visual Studio and I open the account controller and I scroll to the top to where I can find login. So after my login, so over here I stop the application and we are going to make another HTTP post. So inside here, we can have HTTP post and the name is login with dash third dash party. And then we can have public async task action result and the type is user DTO. Then we can name it as login with third party. Then we are receiving login with external DTO and we name it as model and I put the curly braces. So we need to create this class as well. So I copy this and inside my details account. So I am going to have create another class and I name it as login with external DTO. And inside here, we have three properties. One of them access token and one of them is user ID and provider. And we make all of them as required. Okay, my model has been created and then I head back to account controller. The error message is gone. Then we can just approach the same way as we have approached inside register with third party. So we can, I can copy this and then I head top and I can say if model.provider equals Facebook, then do the following and we have else if model.provider.equals st.google and then do the following and else we have returning a bad request and we can say invalid provider then i can head down to the register with third party and i can copy this so we are going to validate the user based on the access token that we have received from the client so i copy this try and catch and i head top and i paste it down here and Instead of unable to register, we can say unable to login with Facebook. So I correct the register with login. And then after all my if at this stage, we know that we have validated the user from Facebook and we know that user is validated. So inside here, we can have our user is await user manager dot users dot first or default async and then we can have x goes to x dot username is model dot user id and we can have double ampersand and x dot provider is model dot provider and then we put semicolon and we say if user is null then return unauthorized 
and we can say unable to find your account but otherwise we return create application user dto and we pass the user so with login with third party we are receiving a model and the mother is and the mother has access token user id and provider and once we have received the mother then we are going to check the provider is either facebook or google and for the facebook we are going to validate the access token and user id and based on the formula that we have provided inside facebook validated asyncs then if this is not validated then return unauthorized otherwise we are going to fetch the user from user manager and we can have first or default and we are going to check the username is the user id and also we are checking if the provider is the model that provider that we have received we are fetching the user and if the user is null then return unauthorized otherwise we are returning the application user dto and that's the same as we have done inside login so i'm going to test my functionality and i run the api project and i head back to the browser and this time i'm going to log in with the facebook so if i click facebook then i can see hi mark and i have been successfully logged in via facebook and if i log out and uh, if i click play then i can see leave immediately restricted areas because we have provided an off guard for play and this play is only available if the user is logged in and if i click facebook then i will be redirected back to the play component because of that return URL and that return URL is uh, going to handle over here. So if the, this return URL is not empty, then navigate back the user to the return URL and we are receiving this return URL inside our guards. So if I open authorization.guard and this is the return URL that we are passing back via pushing the user to the login page and if I log out, then I can see play is still here. So I'm gonna hide the play button if the user is not logged in. So I open Visual Studio Code and then I'm going to close all other tabs and I'm going to open navbar and from navbar.component.html and I scroll top and this is the part that we are going to restrict for only logged in user. So I can make a use of ng container. So I type ng-container and then inside here I can have asterisk ng if and then I can have account service dot user dollar async. So if that is the case, that means the user is logged in. And then I can cut this li and I put it over here and I remove the extra line. So for this ng container, we are checking if the user is logged in and if i save my visual studio code and i head back to browser then i can see the login button is gone but as soon as i log in so i'm going to log in via facebook then i can see play button is appearing and since we're here and i can see we have a very ugly home page so i can modify the home page as well so i head back to my visual studio code and i open home and inside home.component.html I remove this p tag and then we can have div dot and if I save then we can have much better home page okay at the moment our application is having a bug and I would like to introduce you with that bug and I want you to try yourself to fix the bug so if I open my browser and I'm going to log in with Facebook. So if I hit Facebook, then I can see hi Mark. But the bug happens when we try to refresh the page. So if I refresh, then I can see object reference not set to an instance of an object. And if I close this and if I hover over user, then I can see user is null. So this is a good opportunity for you to troubleshoot this bug and try your best to resolve this issue. But I'm going to show you how to resolve this issue in the next video.
Okay, let's try to troubleshoot this bug. So I'm gonna stop the application. And this bug happens whenever we are trying to refresh the page. So if I open my Visual Studio Code and the very first component that is going to be called whenever we are refreshing the page is the app component.ts. So if I scroll down and app.component.ts is the very first things that our angular application is calling and ng on init is basically the main method of the entire application so inside here we have refresh user and from here we are getting the jwt from local host so that's fine from now and we are taking out the jwt from local host because we have set the jwt whenever we try to log in via third party and after here, we are going to call account service dot refresh user. And if I go to the definition and inside here, we are passing authorization bearer and we pass the JWT and we are going to call refresh user token. And this is going to call our refresh user token endpoint inside our API. And if I open and if I scroll to the top, so this is the very first endpoint that we have inside our account controller. And inside here, we are fetching the user using the email so this is the problem because via facebook we don't have email and we only have the username and if i open my jwt service then i can see we are storing the email inside the email claims but instead we can store the username inside the email so from here i can have user dot username and since the username is not empty, then I can get rid of this double question mark. So we are assigning the username inside our email claim instead of assigning email because we are not having emails at all stages. So if I open my SQL server, so for the first user that we have registered via the application, we already have an email. But for the second user, we don't have the email because we have tried to register via Facebook. But for both scenarios, we have the username. And we can resolve that issue by only assigning the username inside the email claim, basically. So if I open the JWT service and inside email, we can have the username rather than user.email. And this will fix the issue. If I run my API application, and then I head back to my browser and I try to log in. I log in with Facebook. And then I try to refresh the page. Then I can see if I refresh the page, then we don't see that bug anymore. And I'm going to try with another user that we have created using the regular registration. So I copy this and I try to log in and I put the password. And this is the another user account. And if I try to refresh, then we can see that also persists. Okay, let's handle Google registration and login. So first of all, we need to set up our Google and we need to have a Google account. So inside my browser, I'm going to search for Google Developer Console. And then I click on the first link and you need to log in with your Google account and then you will be directed to this page and here you can create a project. So I'm going to name it as identity app and I hit create. And once the project has been created, then I can refresh and I can see the identity app project over here. Then click on this hamburger button and navigate to API services and click on off consent screen then you need to create an auth consent screen so i'm going to select external and this will be available to any test user with a google account and i hit create and then i'm going to give it a name so i name it as identity app and then you need to provide the user support so i'm going to choose my own email address that i am creating this application with so I choose this email address and then you can skip the rest and then you need to provide the developer contact information. So I'm going to put the same email address and then I save and continue and you can scroll down and save and continue and you can add some test users. 
So I'm going to add another user. And then I hit add. And then you can click on save and continue. And, and back to the dashboard. So our app is in testing mode. And then we can click on credential. And you need to create credential over here. So I hit this plus button, create credentials. And I choose off client ID. So I choose the second one. And inside here, I choose web application. And for the name, I name it as identity app. And then you need to provide the URI of your local host. So inside authorized JavaScript origins, I head back to my browser and I copy the URI of my Angular application and I come back and I click on add URL and I paste it over here. And we need to remove the extra forward slash. So I remove that and then I scroll down and you can click on create. So this is your client ID and client secret. So we are going to only use from client ID. So I copy my client ID into my clipboard and I head back to my Visual Studio and inside my app settings.json, I open that and after Facebook, I'm going to have Google. And inside Google, I have client ID and I paste the value over here. If you don't want to push your client ID to your GitHub, you can provide your client ID into your user secrets but I'm going to put it inside my app settings anyway. And then I head back to the browser and I can click OK. And we are done with our API and services with Google. So we can close this tab. So let's handle registering with Google inside client app. So I open my Visual Studio code and then I'm going to open index.html. And just like Facebook, we need to have another script tag for Google. So after my Facebook, I hit enter and then I'm going to have a script and SRC. And then we need to install a package called Google One Tab. So I open my second tab and then I put npm install at types forward slash google dash one dash tap then i hit enter and i can see the package has been installed so i get some message for my npm update but i can ignore that and if i open my package.json then i can see at types google one tap is installed and this is the version that i have installed and then i'm going to open register.component.html and inside my Google div, I'm going to remove this. And instead, I'm going to have hashtag Google button. And my Google button will be appear over here. So I open register.component.ts. And then I'm going to have the following property. So I scroll to the top. And just above my register form, I hit enter. And I'm going to have at view child. So I select at view child from Angular core. And then I have a parenthesis and I have Google button. And then I have comma and inside carry brace, I have a static as true. So we are telling that this is a static. And after the parenthesis, I have Google button. So we name it as Google button. And this is the type of element ref. So I bring element ref from Angular core is new element ref. And we set as empty object. Then I scroll down and inside my ng on init i'm going to have this dot initialize google button and i copy this and i scroll to the bottom so i'm going to have a private helper method and i type private and then i paste the name of the function and inside the function we are going to have window as any dot on google library load is an arrow function so i have parentheses and then i have arrow and i have carry brace and then we are going to ignore typescript for here so we say forward slash forward slash and then we have at ts ignore 
So this is going to ignore TypeScript. And then we have google.accounts.id.initialize. And then inside parentheses, we have query brace. And then we have client ID. And colon, we have. So we need to put the client ID. So I navigate back to my Visual Studio and I copy the entire client ID. And then I head back to Visual Studio code and I paste it over here. So inside single quote, I'm going to paste my client ID. And then after here, we have callback and the callback is going to hit another function. So we have this dot Google callback and we have bind and we pass this. And then we have comma and then we have auto select as false. And we have comma, then we have cancel on tap outside as true. And then I put semicolon. And then we are going to ignore TS file one more time. So I copy this and I paste it over here. And we have google.accounts.id.render button. So we are going to render the button. And inside here, we have this dot google button dot native element. And we have comma. Then we are going to shape the button. So inside a curly brace, I'm going to have size of medium. So I select medium and then we have shape. And for the shape, we have rectangular and text. And for the text, we have sign up fit. And comma, we have logo alignment and we can select as center. And then I put semicolon at the desired location. So I need to create this method so I copy this and after this method I'm going to have another private method so I have private async so I select async and I paste google callback and we have a response of type credential response so I select credential response from google one tab so I select this one and then we have curve brace and we can console.log the response so if I save everything and let's see what we have so far. And I'm gonna open the Node.js so we don't have any error. And if I open my browser and I click on create account, then I don't see the button, but if I refresh, then I can see sign up with Google. So we are going to fix this issue, but let's try this button. I'm going to open my console and I'm going to click on sign up with Google. And then I try to put email address. And then it tries to get your confirmation to sign in to identity app as your name. So I select confirm and the response is coming from if I navigate back to register.component.ts and the response is coming from this console log. So this is the response that we have received from Google. And this is the client ID and we have the credential and this is our token. So if I copy this token, and if I navigate to jwt.io, then I can paste the token over here and we can see the payload of all this information. And this is the user ID of my Google account. And we are going to register this account using this user ID and we put it into the username the same way we have done for Facebook. So I head back to my browser and then I close this console. And I'm going to explain what we are trying to do over here. So first of all, we have installed at types Google one tab. So we are going to make a use of this. And if I copy this and if I open my browser and I'm going to search for this, then this is the NPM package that we have installed. So you can get some details over here by navigating to the GitHub or you can get some information as I explained over here. So inside my register.component.html, we have a div and I have specified this as hashtag Google button. And inside my register.component.ts, if I scroll to the top, then we are getting access to that hashtag over here inside view child. So basically viewing this child and we have passed a name and this is coming from, from here. And if I go back and then we are telling that this is static as true. And then we are giving a name and then the type is element red. So we have done this because we inside 
if I scroll down inside initialize Google button, if I go to the definition, we are calling that element ref over here and we are rendering the button using that element ref. And the reason we have used from TS ignore because if I don't do this, if I, for example, remove this, then we are going to have some error. And this is coming from the JavaScript that we have imported into our index.html. So if I open index.html, and this is the script that we have imported. So if I copy the source and I head back to my browser and I paste it over here, and this is the JavaScript that we have imported. So I go back to my Visual Studio code and inside register.component.ts, since this is TypeScript, we need to tell the TypeScript to ignore this. Otherwise, we are going to have some problem. So that's why we have put this sign over here. And that JavaScript has the following method for google.account.id.initialize and we pass a client ID. And then on the callback, if we have uh, been signed by the Google, then this is going to call back a function. And this is exactly the function that we are calling back. And we tell that bind this. So basically we are passing the response over here and we can shape the Google button over here. And this Google callback is having a response. And that response is exactly what we saw. So if I open my identity app and if I open the console one more time, and this is the response that we saw. And we are interested from the credential. And if I copy this credential and I paste it into jwt.io, then inside payload, we have some information. And this information is telling about the account that has been signed via that button. So I can have my name and the picture and given name and sub. And this sub is subject. If I hover over, I can see whom the token refers to. And this is exactly the ID of my Google account. And they are going to store this ID into the username of that new register account, the same way as we have done with Facebook. In order to get this ID, we need to decode the JWT. So we need to install another NPM package in order to decode the JWT. So if I open my Visual Studio code and inside the second tab, I have NPM install JWT dash decode. Then if I open my package.json and if I scroll down, I can see JWT dash decode has been installed and the version is 3.1.2. And then I head back to register.component.ts and inside my Google callback, we can have const decoded token of type any is JWT underscore decode. So we need to bring this JWT underscore decode. So I copy this and then I head to the import part and inside my import section, I'm going to have import and I paste the JWT underscore decode and we can have from and we have JWT decode. So we are importing JWT decode from JWT decode. And then I head back to the bottom of my page. Then we can have response.credential. I can copy this. So we are going to navigate the user to the following method that we have created. So I copy this and then inside my callback, I'm going to paste it over here. And instead of access token, we have response.credential. And if I scroll to the right, and for user ID, we have decoded token.sub. And that's exactly the Google ID that I showed you. And we are assigning that into the user ID. And instead of Facebook, I need to change it to Google. So we are trying to forward the user to account register third party component and we pass Google as the provider. And the access token is this credential and the user ID is decoded token.sub. So if I stay and I head back to my browser, so I'm going to close all other tabs. So we don't need that. And I close this console log as well. And if I click sign up with Google, then I'm going to choose my email account. Then we have been navigated to register third party and we have Google as a provider. If I click on create account one more time, then I can see the Google button is gone. 
So if I click on login and I come back, I can see Google button is gone. But if I refresh, I can see the sign up with Google is appearing. So we have a problem and we can fix it very easily. So if I open Visual Studio Code, then inside register.component.ts, then we need to inject some services. So if I scroll to the constructor and after my router, I can have comma, then I can have private underscore renderer to and the type is renderer2. So select renderer2 from angular forward slash core. And then I can have comma and I have at inject. So select at inject from at angular core. And inside parentheses, we have document. So you need to bring document as well. And then we have private underscore document. And the type is document. So select this one and after you have injected these two you need to scroll down and then after ng on init you have ng after view init and then inside here we can have const script one equals this dot renderer two so i select this one dot create element and we can say create a script and then we can have script one that src is so the script of src is the following so i can copy the script tag so if i go back to index.html i can copy this and then i head back to register.component.ts and i paste it over here and then we have a semicolon and then we have a script one dot async and we can tell this is true and then we can have a script that differ is true and then we can have this dot underscore renderer two dot append child and we have this dot document dot body and we have a comma and we can pass the script one and if i save then i head back to my browser so if i go back to login and i come back then i can see sign up with google is appearing as well so the error has been resolved and if i open my visual studio code and the error has been resolved by this Quotes. and basically we are rendering the script by ng after view in it and that's how we have resolved this issue and we can tell that the source is this one and we can have async and defer so this is exactly the same if i open index.html we have the source and async and defer basically we are bringing this script tag inside my register.component.ts so this is what we are trying to do. So I'm gonna open my Visual Studio and I run the API project. And then I'm gonna open accountcontroller.cs and inside my register with third party, I'm going to put a breakpoint. And then I head back to my browser and I hit sign up with Google. Then I choose my account and I put some random names. And if I hit create account, then I can get caught inside my breakpoint. So if I hover over my model, then I can see if this is my access token. And we have first name, last name, and the provider is Google. And the user ID is that SUB that I showed you earlier. So we don't need to actually do any modification inside register with third body that has been handled previously. And we are going to handle registering with Google next. Okay, let's get started with API. So I start the Visual Studio and then we need to install a package and that package is called google.apis.auth. So I right click on my API and then I select manage NuGet packages and then I search for google.apis.auth and the first link with 131 million downloads, I'm going to select this one and the version is 1.60 and then i install and i select ok and that has been installed now i open account controller and then i find register with third party and then i scroll down inside if model.provider is google so over here i'm going to have a try catch so we're basically trying to do exactly what we have done for facebook we have a try and catch and for any exception we can return unauthorized and we can say enable and then inside my tribe we are going to have 
a function and like the Facebook, if Facebook validated async. So we need to create a function naming as Google validated async. So I scroll down to my private helper method and just below Facebook validated async, I'm going to have, so I hit enter and then I have private async task and it returns a Boolean and we have Google validated async. And then it takes access token and a string of user ID. And inside here, we have var payload is await Google JSON signature. So I need to select this one. And this is coming from google.apis.auth, the package that we have created. So I select this one. And then we have validated async and we pass the access token. And in here we have if this question mark payload dot audience dot equals and we have underscore config and inside my config we have google colon client id and if this is not equals that then return false so google client id is coming from app settings of json and we have google client id and this is the client id and if i go back to account controller then we are checking if the payload that audience is not equal to the client ID that we have. And I'm going to run through all the codes. Then we are putting a debugger and trying to run the code step by step. But for now, I want to finish this helper method. So after here, we have if is question mark payload dot issuer dot equals. And if it's not equals to accounts dot google dot com, we have double ampersand and question mark payload dot issuer dot equals and we have inside here we have https colon forward slash forward slash accounts dot google dot com and then if these two are not equals then we return false and then we have if payload dot expiration time seconds is null then return false and then after here we have date time and we have now is daytime dot now dot to universal time and then we have daytime and we name it as expiration equals daytime offset dot from unix time seconds and we have long and we have payload dot expiration time seconds and then we have dot daytime at the end and then we can check if now is greater than expiration then return false and we can have the final check if question mark payload dot subject dot equals user id so if the payload subject is not equal to the user id then also return false and finally we can return true and then i can copy google validated async and i head to the top to my register with third party and inside model.provider google then inside my try i can have if a question mark google validated async and then we can pass model.access token and comma model.user id and then we can have get a waiter and dot get result so in order to call an async method so we are using from get a waiter and get result and then if this returns false then we have return unauthorized and inside the string we can have unable to register with google so i copy this and i paste it over here so in this we are handling both facebook registration and google registration and let's walk through the code together and we understand what we have written inside my google validated async so first of all i'm going to run my api project and then i'm going to open my browser and I'm going to click on create account one more time and I use sign up with Google and then I choose the Google account. And then I put first and last name and I hit create account. Then I will be get caught inside my breakpoint and I can step over. So this is not Facebook, this is Google. So we can come to the else if and then we are going to inside the try catch block. And then if I step over, then I can click on step into as soon as we have this highlighted we can click on a step into so this is going to step into this function 
and then I click yes then I can come inside my helper method and we have the access token and the user ID if I copy my access token so I'm going to copy my access token on the way to here so I ignore the quotations then I'm going to paste inside jwt.io so if I open my browser and I navigate to jwt.io and I'm going to paste it over here then these are the information that we have received and sub is the google user id assigned to whoever has been logged in and then i go back to my visual studio and then i'm going to step over and this payload is null then if i step over then i can see some value inside my payload and then if i examine what inside then i can see we have audience email email verified expiration time seconds and we have first name, last name, and as well as we have, if I scroll down, we can see subject. And that subject is exactly the user ID. And we have some other information. So first of all, we are trying to check if the payload IDs is not equals to our Google client ID. So we have that Google client ID inside our app settings and we can hover over the audience. So this is the audience that's coming from this function. So this await Google JSON web signature is going to call Google the API call and it passed the access token and then it holds some value. And this payload has the audience and we are trying to check if the audience does not equals our client ID for the Google. And that's check number one for Google. So that means the access token that was provided for this function was different with the client ID that we have inside our application. So I can step over, then this is equal. So it doesn't go to inside the if statement. And then we can do check number two. And we can check if the issuer is not equal to accounts.google.com and https forward slash forward slash accounts.google.com. And if I step over, we can see our issuer is equals to uh, the second one. So that's why we haven't gone inside the second if statement. And we have a step over that. And we are going to do the third validation. And that is the expiration time seconds. And we have some expiration time seconds. So this is not null. Then if I step over, then we are going to have the date time now and we are going to convert it to universal time so if i step over then if i hover over my now i can see this is the universal time of current time and we are going to have the expiration converted to daytime as well so we are making use of daytime offset that from unix time seconds and expiration time seconds we need to cast it to long and then we are taking out the daytime so if i step over then we have a date time for expiration and we are checking if now is greater than expiration if now is greater than expiration that means this token has been expired and then we are simply returning false but since now is less than expiration then it's not going to hit this if statement then i can step over and my final check is the subject and i'm going to check if the subject is not equals to the user id that we have passed to this function so and the final check is uh, successfully and then we are returning true so i can hit a step out then it goes back to the original function so if i select then it goes back to my api call register with third party and this returns true so we are not going to hit unauthorized so i can step over and then I can hit continue and this is going to create my user and put the user ID to username and first name and last name to my user to add. So if I continue, then we will be automatically logged in. So if I navigate back to identity app, then I can see hi Ben. And if I examine my database, so I select top thousand from ASP.NET users 
and Ben Jackson has been registered via Google. So this is the username of Ben Jackson. And if I scroll to the right, I can see the provider is Google. We simply have handled registering with Google and we are going to do login with Google next. Okay, let's handle login with Google. So I open my Visual Studio and we are going to borrow some codes from register.component.ts. So I can close all others except register.component.ts and as well as I can open register.component.html and I'm going to copy my div tag and then I open login.component.html and inside Google I can paste that over here. So instead we are going to have div hashtag Google button. And then I open login.component.ts and I scroll to the top. Then at the same time, I can open register.component.ts and I scroll to the top. And I'm going to copy this and I paste it inside my login.component. So I paste it over here. And for view child, I control that and then I update import from at Angular core. And we can update element ref. So update import from at Angular core. And then I open register.component.ts and inside my constructor we have render and as well as document. So I copy these two lines. Then inside login.component.ts after shared service we have comma. And I can paste those two over here. So I'm going to put my cursor and I hit control dot and then I can select add all missing imports. Then it's going to import all the missings automatically. Then I can open register.component.ts and I can copy ng after view init and I head back and after my ng on init, I'm going to paste that over here. And again, I open register. Then I copy this initialize Google button and I head back and I'm going to paste it over here. And we need to create this function. So again, I head back to register.component and I look for initialize Google button. So I copy these two functions and then I head back to login.component and at the very bottom, I'm going to paste that over here. So we can bring credential from Google one tab and then and for jwt underscore decode, I can head back to register.component and inside my imports, I can copy this jwt underscore decode and I head back to login.component.ts and at the very top, I can bring that over here and that error is gone. And then I can scroll down to Google callback and we don't need the second line so i'm going to get rid of this because we're not redirecting the user so i remove that and after here i press enter then we have this dot account service dot login with third party and then we are going to create login with external model and pass it to this method so we have new login with external so i select this and then we need to pass the arguments so the first one is access token. So for the access token, we have response.credential. And then I put comma. And then we have the user ID. So we have decoded token.sub. And that's the user ID. And I put comma. And then the third one is provider. And for the provider, we have Google. And then we can subscribe. So inside a new line, I can have dot subscribe and then I open and close parentheses and then I open and close curly brace and then we have next and inside my next we don't have any response so I put underscore and then we have arrow and curly brace and then for the next I can borrow some code from login with Facebook so I copy this if this dot return URL and I paste it over here so if we have the return URL, then navigate the user to the return URL. Otherwise, navigate to the home page. And for error, we have error. And inside here, we have this dot shared service dot show notification. And we are displaying a false message. So we have false, and then we can have failed as a title, and then we can have error dot error as the message. So I can copy this 
and for the Facebook, we are going to have the same as well. So I head to the top and I find login with Facebook and inside my error, instead of having this, we are going to display the notification. So instead of this, if a statement, I remove this and we are going to have this .share service that show notification, false, fail, error, that error. So we are displaying a notification for both Facebook and Google. And then we can save all the files and we can navigate to the browser. And if I log out, then if I click on login, then I can see sign up with Google. So this has to be changed to login with Google. So I can fix this issue if I open my Visual Studio code and inside login.component.ts, inside this text, we can have some other options. So sign in with, I can select this one. And if I save and I head back, then I can see sign in with Google instead of sign up with Google. And we are going to handle the API next. Okay, let's finish API endpoint for login with third party. So I'm going to open my Visual Studio and then I can stop the application. And then I search for login with third party endpoint. So I can at the same time remove this breakpoint and head to the top and I can find login with third party. And we are going to handle and we are going to handle if model that provider is Google. So we can have a try and catch and we have exception. And for any exception, we return unauthorized and we can say unable to login with Google. And then inside my try, we can make a use of Google validated async one more time. So we can say if this question mark. So if Google validated async, so Google validated async, the method that we created, if this returns false, then return unauthorized. But inside the Google validated async, we have to pass the model that access token. So I can select model that access token, comma model dot user ID. And then I can have that get awaiter and as well as get resolved in order to make a async method. And if this method is returning false, then inside my if statement, I can copy my unauthorized and I paste it over here. And the rest remains the same. So we are going to fetch the user by the user ID and provider. And if the user is not, then we can say unable to find your account. Otherwise, we are going to create application user DTO. So at this stage, we can test our endpoint and try to sign in with Google. So I run my API application and I head back to my browser. And this time I'm going to sign in with Google. And I choose the account that I have signed up with. And now I have been signed in with Google. And if I refresh, then I can see this refresh token is also working. And at this stage, we have came to the end of this section and we can commit our changes to GitHub. So I'm going to stop my API application and inside Git changes, I'm going to have the following message. So I type section 07, Google and Facebook registration and login. And I commit all, and I'm going to push to the GitHub. In this section, we are going to handle authorization, roles, and claims. And we are going to learn what we can do with those and how we can apply those in our application. So first of all, we need to create our application roles. And if I open my database, and if I examine ASP.NET roles, at the moment, we don't have any roles. And we are going to create three roles. So first of all, I open st.cs. So this is the static details and it contains const string values. So after Google, I have roles and then I have public const string admin role and equals to admin. And then I copy two more down. And the second one is manager role. And the value is manager. And the last one is player role. And the value is player. And then I'm going to create another service called context seed service. So if I open services folder and in here, I'm going to add another class. And then I name it as context seed service. 
and this service is responsible applying any pending migration for our database and seeding into our database. So I'm going to have a constructor and inside my constructor, I'm going to inject context, user manager and role manager. And I'm going to initialize all of these. So I have injected context and user manager of type user and role manager of type identity role. And for the user, make sure you are bringing from api.models. So if I comment this out and if I put control dot over here, so we can inject from mailjack and as well as api.models. So we are taking this from api.models. And after I have injected my dependency injection, then I'm going to have public async task. And then I have initialized context async. And then we are going to check if we have any pending migration. So I have if underscore context dot database dot get pending migrations async. And then we have dot get awaiter and dot get result. And then we have count. So we are counting if there is any migrations. And if the count is greater than zero, then that means we are having some pending migration. And we should apply this migration to our database. So we have await context dot database dot migration async. And this is going to apply any pending migration. And then I'm going to create my roles. So after here, I have if underscore role manager dot roles dot any async. And since we are using async, we have get awaiter and get result. Or you can make a use of just any, and then you don't need to have get awaiter and get result. So it depends on you, anything you would like to do. So this time I'm going to make a use of not from any async method for this if a statement. Then inside here, we are going to create our roles. So we have await underscore role manager that create async. And this role manager create async is going to create role. And we need to give this function an identity role. So we have new identity role. So I select this one and then inside curly brace, we have name equals, and then we are going to get the name from our static details class. So I have st dot admin role, and this is going to paste admin inside my first role. And then I put semicolon and I'm going to copy this two more time. And for the second one, we have manager role. And for the third one, we have player role. And after this if a statement, we are going to create our dummy users. So I'm going to have if underscore user manager dot users dot any async. So this time I'm going to make a use of any async. So we need to have get awaiter and we need to have dot get result. So if we don't have any users inside our database, then we are going to execute the following code. So first of all, I'm going to create my admin user. So I have var admin is new user. So our model, which is coming from api.models. And then, and inside curly brace, I'm going to have first name as admin and last name as Jackson. So our admin last name is Jackson. And then we have username as admin at example.com. And then we have email and the email address is the same as username. So I copy this and I put it over here. And then we are going to confirm the email. So we have email confirm is true. And once we have created our admin object, then we are going to create that admin user into our database. So I'm going to have await user manager dot create async. And we are going to pass admin object and we are going to give this user a password. So the second argument is the password. And we just pass one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we are going to assign roles to our admin. So I have await user manager dot add to roles async. So I'm going to assign three roles to my admin all of admin role, manager role, and player role. So I'm going to select add to roles, prove And as the first argument, we have the admin object. So I put admin. And as the second argument, we are going to have I enumerable of string roles. 
So we have new array and inside carry brace. The first one is sc.admin role and I put comma then we have sc.manager role and then I have sc.player role and I put semicolon. So I have assigned my admin all these three roles. And finally, I'm going to add into my admin user some claims. So after here, I put enter and then I have await user manager dot add claims async. So I'm going to select claims. And then I have admin as the user and and as the second argument, we have new claim. So I select this one from system dot security dot claims. So I select that. And we have array of claim. Then I'm going to have a curly brace. And inside my curly brace, I'm going to assign two claims into my admin. So I have the person as claim, new claim. And we have claim types. So I select claim types. Then dot email. And then we are going to assign the claim of email, the admin email address. So I have comma. Then I have admin dot email address. So I have admin.email and I put a comma. So if I hover over claim, then we have to pass the type and the value and both of them are string. So you can manually put some string character here and some string character here. But this claim has to match whatever we are assigning into our JWT claim. So if I open my JWT service and if I scroll down, then we have the user claims and inside our JWT, we are going to have the email as one of the claim and name identifier and surname. So this has to match exactly what we are trying to add as a claim into our admin. If I come back to context seed service, so we are adding email claim to our admin user. And then we have new claim and we have claim types. So I select claim types dot surname. Then we have admin dot last name and I put semicolon at the end. So we are assigning our admin two claims and one of them is email and one of them is surname. If I go back to JWT service, so inside our JWT token, we have surname and as well as email. So that's why we have made a use of claims type dot surname. So if I hover over surname, then this is a const string value of this. And inside context seed dot service as the first argument, which is type, we have claim types dot surname and claim types dot email. So if you would like to add another claim, so for the third one, you can do, for example, my type and you can have my value. But this my type and my value should match for any claims that you're assigning to your JWT token. But since we don't have that into our JWT token, so I'm not going to have this over here. But I wanted to show you how you can add a new claim of your own custom name. So I remove this. And after creating our admin, then I'm going to create three more users. So I copy admin, all of this, and then I'm going to paste it down here. And for the second one, we are going to have manager. So I have manager over here. And then for the first name, we have manager. And for the last name, we have Wilson. And email address is manager at example.com. So I modify username and email address. And then we are going to pass manager to user manager.createAC. And we are going to assign only one role to our manager. So instead of add two roles, we have to make a use of add two role. And for add two role, we have to only assign one role. So for the first argument, I put manager. And then as a second argument, I remove all of this. And we have sd.manager role. And for add to claims, we have claim types that email and this should be manager that email. And for the surname, we have manager dot last name. And then I'm going to create my player. So I copy my manager and I paste it down here. So for the manager, I substitute with player and I do the modification as the first name, username and email address. And for the last name, I have Miller as the last name for this player. 
and then I'm going to create my player. So instead of manager, I have player and add to role. I'm going to assign player and st.player role. So I'm assigning player role to my player user. And for the claims, I have player and inside here we have player.email and player.lastname. And one thing I just noticed that inside my manager, we have admin over here. So this has to be manager. So I correct that. So make sure for any users that you are using that user object name because we are doing some copy and pasting. So you have to make sure that you are correcting all these values. And lastly, we have another player and that's called VIP player. So I copy my player and I paste it down here and we have VIP player. As the first name, we have VIP player and the last name is Thompson and the username is VIP player at example.com and email is also VIP player at example.com. Then I'm going to change player into VIP player and the roles remains the same. So this is player role. And for the claims, we have VIP player dot email and VIP player dot last name. Okay, we have completed the creating our context seed service. So it's time to make a call to this service. And we are going to call this service inside our program.cs. So open, we are going to start our application. We are going to call this method. And that's how we can create all these roles and dummy users. So I open program.cs, then inside my services, we have builder.services. So we are going to create another service. So I copy this and we have context C service. So I select this one and we are going to call context seed service inside our pipelines. So I scroll down and just, just before app.run, we are going to have a region. So I have region and we name it as context seed and we end the region and this region is just for readability for developer so inside here we have using war scope is app dot services dot create a scope so we are going to inject a service into our program.cs so in order to do that we need to have a scope and that scope is app.services.createScope. And after here, we are going to make a use of try and catch because the migration might throw some exception. And then inside catch, we have exception and we name it as EX. And I'm going to bring exception from using system. And then we are going to have var logger equals scope.serviceProvider.getService. And then we have iLogger. And inside iLogger, we have program so we are passing program to iLogger and iLogger to get service and then I put a semicolon so I need to bring using Microsoft extension dot login and then after here we have logger dot log error and we are passing ex dot message and then we can say failed to initialize and see the database so for any exception we are going to log the error and inside my try i'm going to inject my context seed service so i have var context seed service is scope dot service provider dot get service so i'm basically injecting some service by this line of code and then inside angle bracket i'm going to provide the service provider and the service provider in this case is context seed service and then i close and i close the parentheses and i put semicolon and after here i have a new line and i'm going to make a use of await and context seed service dot initialize context async and then i have parentheses and i close it with a semicolon so we are calling initialize context async from our context seed service so basically we are going to call this method and this method is going to do the following quotes. So in order for this method to create our roles and our dummy users, so we need to drop our database. So if I examine my ASP.NET users, 
so we have some users and over here we are going to see if we don't have any users and if we don't have any users then try to create admin manager player and vip player so i'm going to drop my database and as soon as we start the application then this is going to create my database by this line of code and then it is going to create the roles and as well as creating the dummy users so i save everything and inside package manager console i'm going to have drop dash database and then i put yes and i hit enter and this has dropped my database so i can see successfully drop database and if i go back and i refresh my databases and i don't have identity app so i can close these two and then i'm going to start my application and as soon as i start my application my database is going to be recreated so if i open this i can see that it has created my database and it has put some values into my database. So if I go back and refresh, then I can see identity app has been created. And then if I examine the tables, then I have SPNet users. And if I select up thousand, then I can see I have four users created over here. And if I examine SPNet roles, then I can see I have three roles. And then if I examine SPNet user roles, so this one, then I can see my users has some roles. So this is the user ID and this is the role ID. So for example, if I come back and if I take a look at manager, so this is the ID of my manager. And if I copy this and I go back to SPNet user roles and if I do where user ID equals to the one that I just copied, and if I execute, then I can see it. one role has been assigned to this user. And if I copy my role ID and inside ASP.NET roles, if I do where ID is the one that I just copied, so I can see manager. So with this, I can understand to which user what roles has been assigned. And we can examine SPNet user claims. So if I execute select up thousand roles, then I can understand to which user we have what kind of claim type and what kind of claim values. Okay, we have created our roles. and We have created our dummy users and assigned those some roles and claims. So let's practice authorization with roles and claims. So I stop the API application and inside my controllers, I'm going to create another controller. So I hit add and I select controller and I select API and, and then empty controller. And I name it as RC for roles, claims and practice. So I name it as RC practice. And first of all, we are going to have an endpoint for public access. So I have HTTP GET and I name it as public. And we have public I action result and we name it as public. And inside here, we are returning OK and we have public. This controller is for practice purpose only. And I would like to test my public endpoint. So I start my API application and then I open my Postman. And I'm going to create another folder. So I have add folder and I name it as RC practice. And inside my RC practice, I have a request. So I add request and inside my URL, I have double curly brace URL. So I select this one and then I have API and the name of the controller is RC practice and we have forward slash and the name of the action is public and if i send then i can see public over here and i name this request as public so i'm going to save so we are building our collection and we have public over here and that's exactly what we have written over here so i'm going to stop my application and we are going to practice with roles so i would like to create a region so i have Hashtag region and I name it as roles 
and then I close the region and inside my roles I'm going to copy this and I paste it down here and for the first one we have admin dash role and we name it as admin role and inside returning okay we are going to return admin role and we need to restrict this access to this endpoint by giving this authorization attributes so just above or below http get it doesn't matter so i, I put some enter then just above or below http get we can have authorization so just underneath of this i'm going to have authorize and then we are restricting only for authorized user to access this but we need to give this access some more security level and we are going to limit with some specific roles so the way we do inside parentheses i put parentheses and we can say roles equals and this equals some string value and then we can put double quotation and we can pass the role name so we have admin so this endpoint is going to be accessible for only admin role and if i run my api project and i open postman then inside rc practice i'm going to create another folder so i hit add folder and inside this folder i name it as roles and then inside my role folder i'm going to have a request and i name it as admin role and inside my url i have url and if i send then i get for one unauthorized because i'm not authorized so i need to log in and save my jwt token so i'm going to open account and inside login i'm going to log in as admin at example.com so as soon as i send then I have saved my token into JWT inside test. So if I open test, we have assign user.jwt, which is this one, into some variable called JWT. So I can make a use of that inside admin role. So if I open admin role and inside authorization, then I can select bearer token and I have JWT over here. And if I send, then I get 403 forbidden. And that's because we haven't put the roles inside our JWT token. So if I open my login and if I copy all the JWT and, and then if I head to browser and I go to JWT.io, then inside encoded, uh, I'm going to paste and we don't have any roles over here. So we need to assign roles into our payload and we can achieve that by going back to the jwt service so i'm going to stop the application and inside jwt service i'm going to assign roles into my claims so after user claims i have var roles and we are going to fetch the user roles so i have a wait underscore user manager so i need to bring user manager to here so at the top, I'm going to inject user manager as well. So I have user manager and then I assign user as a type. So select this one and rename it as user manager. And I'm going to initialize this by doing control dot and I select this one. So I have created user manager and then I can make a use of that. So inside here, I have underscore user manager dot get two roles and we pass a user and this function is going to give me all the roles for this user object and this is going to be either one or multiple roles for this user and then we can assign these roles into our claims so we can have user claims so the one that we just created above and then we have add the range and inside here we are going to have roles dot select we are going to select so that select means for each member of roles and then we have role arrow function then we have new claim so we are going to assign a claim and that claim contains the claim types that role and we have a comma then we are going to assign the role and we need to add closing parentheses and we can put a semicolon over here so basically we are going to add another claim to our user claims 
and that his car role and this role is going to contain either one or multiple roles and the roles are assigned to whatever user we are receiving from here and we have an error here so we need to convert this method into async task so after async i have task and then i have open angle bracket and then i put close angle bracket after a string so we have converted this method into an async task and we need to do some modification into our account controller because we are making call to this function so if i open account controller then at the very last we are going to have a problem and that is the problem from here and then we need to convert this function into async task as well because we are going to call an awaited method from here so i can have await and this is going to call an awaited method but we have another problem here and it says we have to convert this function into async task so i have async and then i have task then i can put the user eto into angle bracket so this error has been resolved but we are going to have multiple other errors because we have called this function but we don't have any await just before that so i can make a modification to that so if i scroll to the top the first one is from register with third party so i have to have return await create application user dto and then if i scroll up then I have another here, so I put a wait, and I have two more, so I put a wait for both of them as well. And the last one, I have a wait. So the error has been resolved. Now I can run my API application and try to call admin role one more time. And let's see if we can see admin role. So First of all, I need to log in one more time. If I log in, then I can copy my JWT and I can paste it into JWT.io. So if I open the browser and I paste it over here, then I can see another claim has been added to my payload and that is called role. And for admin, we have manager, player and admin. And that's how we can do authorization and limit the access to some certain endpoint by the role. And we need to have the role inside our JWT token. So if I run my admin role, so I open admin role endpoint and, and if I send, then I can see admin role. Because if I open RC practice, we are expecting to have admin as a role. And that is true for admin user. So if I log in as the player, so inside my login, I'm going to log in as the player. So I open body and instead of admin, we have player. And if I log in, then I have the, this token into JWT. And if I select admin role and if I send, then I can see 403 forbidden because the player doesn't have admin role. So I will head back to my Visual Studio and then I stop the application. And I'm going to create a couple of more endpoint for roles. So I copy this and I paste it four more times. The second one is manager role. And the roles is to be expected of manager. And we can have the name as manager role. And we can return manager role from here. And the next one is player role. So I have player and the role is player. So since this is a string, make sure you're not doing any spelling mistake or any capitalization mistake. And for the player, we can change the name to player and we can display player role. And the next one is going to be admin dash. So inside here, I have or dash manager role we are going to let the user to access this endpoint if their role is admin or manager so if their role is either admin or manager then they can be access to this endpoint and the way we can do so inside roles we can have comma and we put the second role that we are letting the user to be accessed into this endpoint so we have manager so i can change this to admin or manager role and inside my string i can have admin or manager role 
and the last one is admin or player role so we have admin comma player and for the name we have admin or player role and the name is admin or player role so i'm going to test all these endpoints inside my postman so i start my application and then i open postman then i can save my admin role so i save this and i can duplicate admin role four more times so i select these three dots and i select duplicate and that has duplicated this request so i'm going to duplicate three more times so i have four duplicate of admin role copy so i open the first one and i name it as manager role and we are going to hit manager role and i can save then i open the third one and as the name we have player role and the endpoint is called player role and i can save and i open the fourth one and as the name we have admin or manager role and the endpoint is called admin dash or dash manager dash role and i can save and the last one is so i name it as admin or player role and the endpoint is called admin dash or dash player dash role and i can save so i'm going to test the endpoints by trying to log in with different accounts so first of all i open login and i'm going to log in with manager so i put manager at example.com and if i click send then i save the jwt and i can bring up admin role and if i send then i can see 403 forbidden but if i send for manager role then i can see manager role over here that means I have been access to manager endpoint because I'm with role of manager. But if I open player role, then I can see 403 forbidden. And if I open admin or manager, if I send, then I can see admin or manager role. So this is either admin or manager can access to this endpoint. But for admin or player, if I do, I don't see that message and I can see 403 forbidden. And this time I'm going to log in as player. So if I send, then I save the token. If I open manager role, then I don't see that message. But for the player, I can see player role and admin or manager, I don't see. And admin or player, I can't see. But for admin, since the admin has all of the roles, then admin can access to each individual endpoints. Okay, now let's practice with authorization with policy. So I stop the API application and if I open RC practice, then we are going to do with roles and we are going to limit with roles access. But we can create some policy and we can limit the access with the policy that we have created. So I can open program.cs and we can create those policy. If I scroll top, inside the services section so just after my last service i'm going to have so i put enter and then i have builder dot services dot add authorization and inside add authorization then i have opt and then an arrow function and then inside the query brace i have opt dot add policy and we are going to give the policy a name so the first one is admin policy and then we have comma and then we are going to have policy goes to policy dot require role so i can choose require role from policy and we can have admin so admin policy is requiring admin role and that's the first policy that we have inside our add authorization service so i can put semicolon over here and as well as here and i copy this two more time and the second one is manager policy and we have manager and the third one is player policy uh, as a role we have player and then i'm going to open rc practice and i'm going to close the roles region so we're done with roles and then i'm going to create another region and i name it as claim policy and i end the region then inside here i copy this and i paste it down and for the name we have admin dash policy and the name is admin policy 
and we have to have authorize so inside authorize attribute so instead of roles we are going to have policy and we have policy current and we paste the policy name so if i open program.cs and i copy admin policy and i head back and i paste it over here so this requires admin policy and what's inside admin policy if i go back this requires admin role and that's the policy that has been assigned to admin policy so i'm going to go back rc practice and we can have admin policy as a return value and i'm going to copy this two more time and the second one is manager policy so the route is manager policy and the policy name is manager policy and we can give it the name of manager policy and for the return value we can say manager policy and the third one is player policy so i make the correction we have player policy and the name is player policy and we have player policy and i'm going to run my api application and then i can open my postman and i'm going to close all other tabs except login and i close this roles folder and i'm going to create another folder so i select add folder and i name it as claim policy and i'm going to add a request and this time we have url forward slash api practice so i select this one and the endpoint goes to admin dash policy and we have to click on authorization and we select bearer token and we select jwt and we can change the name of this request by clicking on here and we can have admin policy and i can save so i have admin policy over here and I need to be logged in as admin. So if I select login and if I choose admin and I send, then I have saved my token. And if I click on admin policy and if I send, then I can see admin policy over here. And I believe the rest is working. So if I select manager and I send, and then I'm going to duplicate admin policy two more time. So I select duplicate and I select duplicate one more time. So the second one is, so I change the name into manager policy and I get rid of copy. And for the endpoint, we are going to hit manager dash policy. And I make the modification for the third one. So this one is player policy. I remove copy and this is player dash policy. And I'm going to save manager policy and player policy. So I select login and this time I'm going to login as manager. And if I send and I save, then I open manager policy. And if I send, then I can see manager policy. But if I select admin policy, then I can get 403 forbidden. And if I select player policy, then I can get 403 forbidden as well. So I need to log in as player. So if I log in as player, and if I select player policy, and if I send, I can see player policy works. So that was some basic practice of policy, but we are going to practice a little more advanced. So I open Visual Studio and I stop the application and I'm going to open program.cs one more time. And this time I'm going to create another policy. So I can say opt.add policy and I name it as admin or manager policy. And for the value, we have policy goes to policy and then we have policy that require role and inside require role we can have a string array of roles so if i see this we can assign multiple roles so for the first one we have admin and then i have comma and the second one is manager and i put semicolon at the end and then the next policy is going to be so i copy this down and the next one is going to be admin and manager so this Policy is going to be accessible for admin and manager. So both admin role and manager role has to be assigned and both of them are required for this policy. So the way we do, we should get rid of manager from here. And then we can have another dot require role and we are going to put manager over here. So by this, we have admin and manager role, but the above we have admin or manager role. And I can have another policy. So I copy this down and I can say all role policy. 
and I'm going to assign all the rows to this policy. So I get rid of the second require role and then inside my require role after admin I have comma and then I put manager and then I put comma and then player and I'm going to create three more endpoints inside my RC practice. So I open RC practice and then I copy the last one and after here I'm going to paste it three more times. So for the first one I can have admin dash or dash manager policy so for the name of our root we have admins so i make sure this is lowercase admin so admin or manager policy that's a root and for the authorization we are going to make a use of admin or manager policy and this name is exactly the same as if i come back to program.cs is exactly the same as this one so i can copy this and I paste it over here in order not to make some spelling mistake. And the name is the same as my policy, so it doesn't matter. So the name of the I action result is the same. And for return value, we can say, so I get rid of player, then we can say admin or manager policy. And then I copy this endpoint and I paste it over here. And instead of or, we have and. So that's the name of our endpoint. And then I copy the policy name and I paste it down here. And instead of or, we have and. And the method name should be admin and manager policy. And inside return, we can have admin and manager policy. And the last one is all role policy. So I go back to program.cs and I copy all role policy. Then I head back to RC practice controller and I paste the policy name over here. So our role policy, and I can paste it to the name of my method as well. And inside my route, I can have all dash role policy. And inside my return, I can have all role policy. And I'm going to test this three endpoint inside my Postman. So I can start the API application and I open Postman. And I'm going to duplicate the last one three more times. So I can select duplicate and I can say duplicate and duplicate one more time. So for the first one, I select the first one and I name it as admin or manager policy. And the route is admin or manager policy. And the second one is, so I rename it as admin and manager policy. The route is admin dash and I choose the last one and the last one is all role policy. So I name it as all role policy and the endpoint is all dash role dash policy and I can save. So I am building my collection over here as well. So let's try with admin. If I log in with admin, I'm going to choose admin inside here. And then I choose admin or manager policy. If I select, then I can see admin or manager policy over here. If I select admin and manager policy, then I can see admin and manager policy over here because admin has both admin and manager roles. And our roles should be accessible as well. So we have a typo. So this is role with E at the end. And if I save and send, then I can see all role policy over here. So this time I'm going to log in with manager and then admin or manager policy should work. Yes, I can see admin or manager, but admin and manager should not work. So if I send, then I can see 403 forbidden and our role policy must work. Lastly, we are going to make a use of claims. And let's see how we can handle claims into our policy. So I open Visual Studio and I stop the application and I open program.cs. And then after this, I can put enter and I can have app.add policy. So in order to make a use of claims, we need to add into the policy. And for the name, I can say admin email policy. So we are letting this policy to be accessible for only the admin email. 
So whoever has the admin email, then they can be accessible to this policy. So I put comma, and then we have policy, goes to policy, and we have policy dot require claim. So this time I'm going to make a use of require claim. And we are interested in, so I put parentheses and we can have claim types. So I need to bring claim types. So if I put control dot, we are going to import from using system security dot claims. And then we can have dot email and we put comma and then we are putting the value. And for the value, we have admin at example.com and we put semicolon at the end. So this is our first policy for claim. And this policy is requiring a claim of the following email address. And this policy is requiring the claim of the type is claim types dot email and the value is admin and example dot com. And I copy this one more time. And the second policy we are going to have. So I remove admin email. Then I can have Miller surname policy. And then inside require claim, we can have claim types dot surname. And inside the value, we can have Miller. So if I open context seed service, and if I scroll down, I can see the player and the last name is Miller. So we are making a policy for Miller only. And if I head back to program.cs and Miller surname policy is requiring the following claim. So let's practice these two policy. So I head back to RC practice controller so I put enter and I have region and I name it as claim policy and I end the region. So if I scroll to the top, I can see claim policy over here. So this region should be named actually policy. So I remove claim from here because we're not using from any claims policy over here and I can close this region. And then if I scroll down, and inside my claim policy, then we are going to put any endpoint that is going to have any policy that is checking any claims. So I can copy the last one and I paste it over here. So I put a couple of enters and I paste it over here. And then I can close my policy region. So we renamed the claim policy to policy and we have created another region called claim policy. And the route is, so I remove this one and we can have admin email policy. So we have admin dash email dash policy as a route and the policy is admin email policy. So this is exactly matching as over here. So I head back and for the name, we have admin email policy and we can return admin email policy. And then I can copy this and paste it one more time. And for the route, we have Miller dash. So instead of email, we can have surname policy. And if I go back to program, then I can copy this and I head back and I can paste it over here. And I paste it over here as well. And I can return Miller surname and I remove email policy and I put a space. So I'm going to test these two endpoints. So I start my API application and I open Postman. So we can rename claim policy, this folder. So if I uh, select this one and if I choose edit, then we can just remove claim because we have removed that region inside our RC practice controller. And I can control S to save this. So this folder is only for policy. And then I can minimize and I can create another folder. So if I select add folder, and this time we can call it as claim policy. And I, if I open, then we have an add request and we have to put the URL for a slash API for a slash RC practice. So I select this one and instead of public, we have admin dash email dash policy. And I can rename it from here. So if I select this one, I can have admin email policy and I need to click on authorization and I select bearer token and I put JWT over here. So if I save and I can go back to headers and if I send, then I can see 403 forbidden because we might have been logged in with another user. So I select login 
and I'm going to choose admin. And if I send, then I go back to admin email policy. And if I send, then I can see admin email policy. And I'm going to duplicate this request. So I select duplicate. And for the name, we have Miller surname policy. And the route is, so I select admin and I switch it to Miller. And then instead of email, we have surname. So this is looking for Miller as a surname inside the JWT token. So if I save, I am logged in as the admin. So if I send, then I can see 403 forbidden because admin doesn't have that surname. If I click on login, the surname of admin is Jackson. But as soon as I log in with a the player, then I have the Miller as the last name. And this is going to satisfy the policy that we have created. So if I select Miller surname policy, then if I send, then I can see Miller surname policy. So I'm going to add two more policy and do a little more complicated into our policy rules. So I head back to Visual Studio and I start the application and I open program.cs. I'm going to copy the last one and I paste it down here. And this time for the name, we have manager email and Wilson surname policy. And we are going to add two required claims to this policy. So for the first one, we have policy that require claim and the surname is Wilson. So I remove Miller and I put Wilson and then I can have that and another require claim. So I select this one and in fact, I can put it inside a new line. So I enter here and inside the parentheses, I'm going to have claim types. So I select claim types dot email and then I have comma. Then I have manager at example.com. So this policy is requiring two claims. One is the surname should be Wilson. And the second one, the email address should be manager at example.com. And for the next policy that I'm going to add, I'm going to do it inside a separate method. So I can open st.cs. Since this is a static details class, then I can add a static method. So after this, I can have public static boo. So this returns true or false. Then I can have VIP policy. And inside parentheses, we have authorization handler context. So I select authorization handler context. So I select this one. Microsoft.aswinet code that authorization and we have context. So we are accessing to the context and then inside parentheses and then I put curly brace and inside this function I'm going to have if context dot user dot is in role. We are checking the role and the first role should be player role. So we are checking if the user is in player role and then i have double ampersand and for the second condition i have context that user that has claim and inside my has claim i can have c goes to c and then c dot type is claim types so i select claim types from system dot security claims and we can have dot email and then i have double ampersand and and then i have c dot value dot contains and inside parentheses i have vip and if these two conditions are true then we return true otherwise we return false so basically this vip policy is receiving a context as the argument then it is going to check the context that user if that is in role of player role and if context that user has claim and for the claim we have to put the claim type is email and the value is containing VIP. So if I open context seed service, if I scroll to the VIP player, this email contains VIP and this should work for only VIP player, not for player itself. Because the player doesn't have VIP inside its email. So then I open program.cs and I'm going to add the last policy. So I have opt.add policy and I name it as VIP policy and then I have policy goes to policy dot require assertion so we select require assertion and then we have context goes to context 
and we are going to call the method that we have created inside st class so i put st and then we have vip policy and we pass the context and i put semicolon and after we have created the last policy then i head back to rc practice and i'm going to add two more endpoints so i copy the last one and i paste it two more times so the route is manager dash email dash and dash wilson dash surname policy so the route is manager dash email dash and dash wilson dash surname dash policy and for the policy we can head back to program.cs and i can copy this one and i head back to rc practice and i paste it over here and the name i paste it over here as well and for returning the value i can say manager email and wilson surname and the last one we can have vip policy so i can remove this and instead i can have vip dash policy so this is the route and for the policy name so i can head back to program then i copy vip policy and i head back to rc practice and i paste it over here and for the name of the endpoint i can paste it over here as well and for returning i can say vip policy so i would like to test these two endpoints so i start my api application and i'm going to open my postman and i'm going to duplicate the last one two more time so i select duplicate two more time and for the first one we can name it as so i name it as manager email and wilson surname policy and for the endpoint i can copy from here so i select this since it is a long name so i copy this and then i paste it over here and i can save and i choose the last one and i rename it to vip policy and for the endpoint we can have vip policy so i remove miller surname and instead i can have vip policy and i can save this request to my collection so let's give it a shot so i'm going to log in as a manager and my manager has wilson as a surname so this should work for manager so i can see manager email and wilson surname policy and this time i'm going to log in as player so if i choose player and if i choose vip policy then this doesn't work because player doesn't have vip inside its email so if i copy the jwt token and if i paste it over jwt.io then the email doesn't contains vip as the rule that we have assigned over here so we have assigned that the role has to be player so the first condition is true but the second condition is not true so this is returning false but we have another player user so if i head back to context seed service and the last user that we have added is vip player at example.com so if i select this one and i head back to login and i'm going to paste it over here so we are trying to login as vip player so if i send and then i can head back to vip policy and if i try to send then i can see vip policy and this is working because of the two conditions are valid okay we have come to the end of this section i open visual studio and i stop the application and inside git changes i'm going to make the following message so i have written section 08 authorization with user roles policy and claims and i commit r and i push to the github 